disregard any evidence for which I sustain an objection and any evidence that I order to be struck. Anything you may have seen or heard outside the courtroom is not evidence, and you must entirely disregard it. The lawyers might stipulate or agree to a fact, or I might take judicial notice of a fact. Otherwise, what I say and what the lawyers say is not evidence. You are to consider only the evidence in the case, but you are not expected to abandon your common sense. You are permitted to interpret the evidence in light of your experience. Instruction 12, direct and circumstantial evidence. Facts may be proved by direct or circumstantial evidence. The law does not treat one type of evidence as better than the other. Direct evidence can prove a fact by itself. It usually comes from a witness who perceived firsthand the fact in question. For example, if a witness testified he looked outside and snow, saw it was raining, or today it would be snowing, that would be direct evidence that it had rained or snowed. Circumstantial evidence is indirect evidence. It usually comes from a witness who perceived a set of related events, but not the fact in question. However, based on that testimony, someone could conclude that the fact in question had occurred. For example, if a witness testified that she looked outside and saw that the ground was wet and people were closing their umbrellas, that would be circumstantial evidence that it had rained. Instruction 13, believability of witnesses. In deciding this case, you will need to decide how believable each witness was. Use your judgment and common sense. Let me suggest a few things to think about as you weigh each witness's testimony. How good was the witness's opportunity to see, hear, or otherwise observe what the witness testified about? Does the witness have something to gain or lose from this case? Does the witness have any connection to the people involved in this case? Does the witness have any reason to lie or to slant the testimony? Was the witness's testimony consistent over time? If not, is there good reason for the inconsistency? If the witness was inconsistent, was it about something important or unimportant? How believable was the witness's testimony in light of other evidence presented at trial? How believable was the witness's testimony in light of human experience? Was there anything about the way the witness testified that made the testimony more or less believable? In deciding whether or not to believe a witness, you may also consider anything else you think is important. You do not have to believe everything that a witness said. You may believe part and disbelieve the rest. On the other hand, if you are convinced that a witness lied, you may disbelieve anything the witness said. In other words, you may believe all, part, or none of a witness's testimony. You may believe many witnesses against one or one witness against many. In deciding whether a witness testified truthfully, remember that no one's memory is perfect. Anyone can make an honest mistake. Honest people may remember the same event differently. Instruction 14, depositions. A deposition is the sworn testimony of a witness that was given previously outside of court with a lawyer for each party present and entitled to ask questions. Testimony provided in a deposition is evidence and may be read to you in court or may be seen on a video monitor. You should consider the deposition testimony the same way you would consider the testimony of a witness testifying in court. Instruction 15, objections and rulings on evidence and procedure. From time to time during the trial, I may have to make rulings on objections or motions made by the lawyers. Lawyers on each side of a case have a right to object when the other side offers evidence that the lawyer believes is not admissible. You should not think less of a lawyer or a party because the lawyer makes objections. You should not conclude from any ruling or comment that I make that I have any opinion about the merits of the case or that I favor one side or the other. And if a lawyer objects and I sustain the objection, you should disregard the question and any answer. 
During the trial, I may have to confer with the lawyers out of your hearing about questions of law or procedure. Sometimes you may be excused from the courtroom for that same reason. I will try to limit these interruptions as much as possible. Please be patient, even if the case may seem to go slowly. Instruction 16, Statement of Opinion. Under limited circumstances, I will allow a witness to express an opinion. Consider opinion testimony as you would any other evidence. Give it the weight you think it deserves. You may choose to rely on the opinion, but you are not required to do so. If you find that a witness informing an opinion has relied on a fact that has not been proved or has been disproved, you may consider that in determining the value of the witness's opinion. Instruction 17, charts and summaries as evidence. Charts and summaries that are received as evidence will be with you in the jury room when you deliberate. You should consider the information contained in them as you would any other evidence. Instruction 18, charts and summaries of evidence. Certain charts and summaries, sometimes referred to as demonstrative exhibits, will be shown to you to help explain the evidence. However, these charts and summaries are not themselves evidence, and you will not have them in the jury room when you deliberate. You may consider them to the extent that they correctly reflect the evidence. Instruction 19, out of state or out of town experts, you may not discount the opinions of an expert merely because of where he or she lives or practices. Instruction 20, conflicting testimony of experts. In resolving any conflict that may exist in the testimony of experts, you may compare and weigh the opinion of one against that of another. In doing this, you may consider the qualifications and credibility of each, as well as the reasons for each opinion and the facts on which the opinions are based. Instruction 21, questions from the jury not permitted. I want to give you an instruction regarding questions from the jury. The nature of a trial is that we take one witness at a time. No witness can tell the whole story. You may have questions from time to time that arise based on the testimony you've heard so far. Please be patient and wait to hear all the evidence. Sometimes information you need to decide can only be presented by witnesses who may be called later in the trial. For that reason, you should not start forming opinions until after you've heard all the evidence. Also, the parties have spent many months exchanging information and obtaining it from third parties. They have been required to disclose to each other as they proceeded what proof they plan to present to you to prove their side of the case. In some cases, they have asked and obtained rulings from the court as to certain proof that may or may not be offered. When the evidence is fully presented, you will have all of the information necessary to make the decisions that you need to make. That may or may not mean that all of your questions are answered. Sometimes the rules of evidence prohibit the kind of additional information that you think might be helpful. Or sometimes the parties have chosen not to present that evidence. In any event, you must make your decision based on the evidence presented to you. You should not speculate as to what other evidence that might have been presented might have shown. So that concludes the opening instructions. Are the plaintiffs ready to begin their opening statement? Yes, yes Your Honor. Do you want to introduce ourselves first? If you could, yeah. I, I neglected to do that. If you could please introduce who's at your table and your client, please. Good morning. My name is Robert Sykes. Uh, this is Lawrence Bueller. He and I are the co-lead counsel here. We also have uh, Kristen Van Norman and Peter Sorensen. Altogether, we are honored to represent Terry Sanderson here at the end. Thank you. And the defense. Thank you. Uh, my name is Steve Owens. I'm here in town at a firm called, well, I should say Salt Lake City, uh, at a firm called Epperson and Owens. Uh, this is James Egan, Noreen Aburama, Peter Jensen, and we're all here for Ms. Paltrow. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bueller, you may begin. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm trying to decide which side is better. I might switch.
his skiers caused crashes. Defendant Gwyneth Paltrow knew that looking up the mountain and to the side. Counsel, you need to use the mic. Just uh, it's right here. Testing. Your Honor, while we're doing that, we should be clear that no witnesses at the trial are permitted in this courtroom. I don't, I'm not keeping track of everyone, but the exclusionary rule applies. The exclusionary rule will apply, meaning that anyone who will be a witness in this case cannot sit in and listen to the case before they testify. So if there's anyone here that's a witness, uh, you'll need to leave the courtroom now. Thank you. <coughs> Did we get it operating? Okay. Let's start again. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Still can't hear. No. Oh, well, let's try this. Is that better? Much better. Nice. Rotate the base of that microphone. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen. Distracted skiers cause crashes. Defendant Gwyneth Paltrow knew that looking up the mountain and to the side while skiing down the mountain was dangerous. And she knew that skiing that way, looking somewhere else, blindly skiing down a mountain by looking up and to the side was reckless. And she knew if she continued to ski that way, that it was not a matter of if, but when, by looking up and to the side, um, it was not a matter of, uh, she would crash into somebody below her and someone would get seriously and permanently hurt. She knew what she was doing was dangerous. She knew it was reckless and somebody, well, and somebody would get hurt anyway. I think I just said that. But before we get into the details of this case, of how Gwyneth Paltrow's neglect, her choices, and her conscious disregard for other people on the mountain, all combined together to cause Terry Sanderson to suffer four broken ribs and permanent brain damage we first have to talk how skiers are supposed to ski down a mountain, what the rules of safety are, and the purpose for those rules, and what happens when skiers break those rules. That way we will all be on the same page, and we can get into the details of this case, okay? <coughs> all skiers know that when they are skiing down the mountain, it's their responsibility to pay attention, look downhill, and yield the right of way to the skiers below them. Because the skiers below them can't see behind them to control, um, as they turn left and right to control their speed, especially when there's multiple people on the mountain, it's the uphill skiers responsibility to yield the right of way to those below. And it's never enough to say, well, so what if I crashed into someone that was below me on the mountain? That doesn't mean it's all my fault. Because especially on a beginner run, they know that skiers may be less experienced and that skiers below them trust that the ones coming behind are paying attention. That's what skiers do. Before they start down a hill, they take account of how many skiers are below them, what those skiers are doing, and they keep their eyes forward down the hill so they can yield the right of way. And even though it can be challenging sometimes when skiers do these things, they get to enjoy skiing, they get to enjoy, practice their skiing, and most importantly, everyone gets to go home safe at the end of the day, and that's a good thing. 
But some skiers say, well, what's so wrong with looking up the mountain behind me and to the side while skiing down the hill? Just because a crash occurs on the mountain with somebody that was below me, that doesn't mean it's my fault. And some skiers say, well, what if the person below me on the mountain was changing directions quickly? Maybe it's their fault too. And finally they say, look, what's the big deal? You're not that hurt. And it's attitudes like this, behavior like this, and choices like these when crashes happen. And sometimes it's just a bump or a bruise. Sometimes it's a scare or a close call. But sometimes it's worse. Sometimes it's broken bones. Sometimes um, a concussion or permanent brain damage. And that's exactly what happened here. So let's get into the details of the case. Defendant Gwyneth Paltrow has skied since she was three years old and considers herself a, a, an intermediate skier. Miss Paltrow has skied about a half a dozen times at Deer Valley Ski Resort. She hires multiple ski instructors for her children, which allows them to skip the lines. The private instructors cost thousands of dollars per day. On the day of the collision, February 26, 2016, Miss Paltrow is skiing at Deer Valley with nine people, including her two children, her future husband, Brad Falchuk, his two children, and four Deer Valley private ski instructors. Eric Christensen is one of those private ski instructors. He has worked for Miss Paltrow's family for a handful of ski vacations in past seasons. Eric Christensen uh, knows the family well enough that one time he sent her son some pottery that he hand makes. A few minutes before noon, Miss Paltrow's group of 10 meet at the top of Bandana Ski Run to go to the bottom for lunch. Bandana is a green run about three quarters of a mile long. Deer Valley grooms Bandana every, day, every ski day. Skiers have skied on it for three hours. The snow is packed. Although a green run, Bandana is steep enough for skiers to pick up speed unless they make turns. Slow signs are always at the top. I'm just going to show you a picture of that real quick. This is not the actual ski day or the event. This is just a, an example of what Bandana looks like. So this is the top of Bandana Ski Run. Uh, these are, this is not the day of the crash, but it's near to the crash site. And as you can see, the top of the lift is where people get off and start to ski. And they come down, and uh, the rest of Bandana goes down about another half mile or so. just had one of Bob's uh, fisherman's friends cough drops and it's a little drier than I expected. Also at the top of Bandana is a meetup group of about six adults. A meetup group is a, a group that meets online to engage in activities like skiing, um, hiking, or bowling, or many other activities. Plaintiff Terry Sanderson is in this meetup group. Four in the meetup group um, ski down, four of those in the meetup group ski down first, then Sanderson skis down to the right. Craig Ramon is another person in the meetup group who skis about 35 feet behind Sanderson. Sanderson and Ramon know each other only through skiing in this meetup group. So they're not really 
close friends, but they know each other. And they've only done about a half a dozen of these meetup groups together. At the top of, uh, of Bandana, Ms. Paltrow, her two kids, and their two instructors are ready to go down to the bottom of Bandana for lunch. Before they ski, one of Ms. Paltrow's children says, Mommy, Mommy, watch us ski. Okay. The children and their two instructors ski to the left. Um, the, the, the two instructors are Eric Christensen and Carrie Oaks. Miss Paltrow skis down to the right. She turns her head up to look at her children. As she turns her head back down, she screams. Then skis back into the back of Terry Sanderson. She rides his back down. They hit the ground hard, and Miss Paltrow bounces off of Terry. The weight of both of them, their bodies, caused uh, Mr. Sanderson's rib cage and his arm to smash into the ground, breaking four of his ribs, two of them completely. Sanderson's helmeted head hits the ground, causing a concussion as his brain strikes the inside of his skull. Sanderson is face down in the snow, unconscious. Skiing 35 feet above them, Craig Ramon is the, is the only eyewitness to the, uh, of the crash. Ramon skis down and stops just next to them. He asks if they are okay. If they, are okay. they say nothing. Ramon, uh, again, is the only witness of this crash. Miss Paltrow is slow to get up. Her son's uh, instructor, Eric Christensen, skis over from the left and stops above Sanderson and screams at Sanderson, who is not moving. What did you do? What did you do? Surprised by the crash and Christensen yelling at Sanderson, Ramon thinks, why is this Deer Valley guy screaming at Sanderson? He didn't cause this collision. Christensen doesn't let up, so Ramon steps between them. Christensen stops yelling at Sanderson. Sanderson is still not moving. They ask Sanderson if he is okay, but Sanderson only groans. Craig Ramon turns to Paltrow, are you okay? He asks several times, are you okay? She doesn't say a word, and she slides a few feet down the hill. Terry moves a little and groans, my ribs. Paltrow turns away and bolts down the mountain to the bottom. Christensen turns to Ramon. Do you realize your buddy just took out Gwyneth Paltrow? Sanderson moves more, trying to get his skis around. Eric Christensen steps closer to Sanderson, picks him up by his hands, and stands him up. Snow is caked in Sanderson's goggles. Christensen turns his skis down the mountain, and he bolts, skiing straight to the bottom, following Paltrow's group leaving Sanderson and Ramon alone at the crash site. Sanderson is standing but hunched over, mumbling. Uh, and Ramon says, do you think you can ski? I think so. Sanderson tries but skis poorly. Ramon says, stop, stop, you forgot how to ski. Do you know your name? Harry, do you know where you are? I have no clue. Ramon says, let me get some help. And Ramon steps back and flags down a uh, Deer Valley employee and says, can you uh, get ski patrol here? This guy's been hit. He's hurt and he's uh, just out of it, disoriented. Smith, excuse me, within minutes, a Deer Valley ski patroller, Whitney Smith, arrives with a sled. 
Smith examines Sanderson, puts him in a sled, and takes him down to the first aid station at the bottom of Bandana. At the first aid station, Sanderson again is evaluated, and he still has some disorientation. His ribs hurt. Whitney Smith tells him, and his, uh, the group of people in the meetup group that are with him, he needs to go to an Instacare in Park City. Terry goes to the Instacare with someone who drives him. Uh, he's not sure who it was. And at the Instacare, he's evaluated. But the Instacare says, you need to go to an ER room. Uh, his, uh, it looked, appeared that his pain in his ribs might be broken, and he still had, or he reported that he was unconscious. The next day, uh, Terry goes into the VA emergency room. So what does the defense have to say about these things? First, they say, that's not the way this happened. He hit me from behind. I know the witness, Ramon, says he heard me scream and look up and saw the crash. I never saw Sanderson before he hit me. Sanderson was the one who hit me. This wasn't my fault. They also say, the defense, this is all Sanderson's fault. He's the one who can't remember the crash. My ski instructor, Eric Christensen, said he saw Sanderson above me making big turns and going really fast. This is Sanderson's fault. And they say, look, what's the big deal? He's 69 years old. Our doctors say he had some dementia and blindness in an eye and many other problems. Yeah, he broke some ribs, but those will heal. And 85% of people with brain injuries heal. What's the big deal? Oh, and, and look at his high test scores. He can't have, a brain can't have a brain injury. And finally, they say, so what if he had a head injury and four broken ribs on the day of the crash? Eight hours later, he wrote to his daughter, I'm famous. That shows he can't be injured, and this is just about celebrity of Ms. Paltrow. Because of the defense's claims that nothing Ms. Paltrow did caused this crash and his injuries, uh, we, on behalf of Terry and his family, we contacted Dr. Richard Bain, a neurologist and biomedical engineer. He applies medicine and physics to understand traumatic brain injuries like this. Dr. Bain, the defense says nothing they did caused this crash and Terry Sanderson's injuries. Is that true? And Dr. Bain says, well, I don't know. Give me everything you've got, including medical records, scans, x-rays, reports, and so forth, and I want to examine him. Then I'll look at his case. But just so you know, you may not like what I say, but I'll tell you true. So we give Dr. Bain the x-rays, the tests, the reports, and Terry sees him for an exam. And after Dr. Bain has reviewed these things, we call him up. So Dr. Bain, what do you think? Bain says, no, actually, absolutely she caused this crash. She hit him from behind, which means she was higher on the hill than him. Well, but how do you know? Well, he broke his four ribs when she hit his, uh, when she hit his back, knocking him down to the ground, and she landed on top of him, just like Ramon, the witness, said. The only way for his broken ribs on the right side could fracture like this is if she hit him from behind and landed on top of him, pressing his right arm into his chest. That's really the only way to have broken four ribs like this, too severely broken. Well, Dr. Bain, the defense says he should have recovered from the concussion. Well, that makes no sense because he still has symptoms more than 18 months after the crash. That means his brain injury is permanent. Well, Dr. Bain, will you be willing to come to court to testify to our jury 
so we can get this right because the defense says they are going to take this all the way to trial. I'd love to, but I'm busy that week. But I can give you my deposition. So last week, the parties took Dr. Bame's deposition. You, the jury, will hear, uh, will see it this week. And just so you know, a deposition is an out of court sworn testimony where the lawyers on both sides testify or um, ask questions to a witness. Um, and uh, in this case, it was recorded. So what happened to Terry? Well, the day after the crash, he goes to the VA hospital. At the VA, they x-ray his ribs and they say, yes, you've got four broken ribs, two of them broken completely. And then a few days later, they confirm Terry suffered a concussion in this ski crash. Over the next year, Terry is seen by various people at the VA, including uh, speech therapists and other doctors, a psychiatrist, and he's trying to get better. Terry doesn't want to have a brain injury. Terry was a uh, eye doctor in the Army for three years, a captain, and that's why he goes to the VA. But after a year, he's still got symptoms of a, of a persistent brain injury. So um, I refer him to a Dr. Alina Fong. She's a neuropsychologist uh, neuro <laughs> in Utah County, and she treats thousands of uh, people who suffer brain injuries that are persistent. And Dr. Fong treated Terry uh, and, uh, from about a year and three months after the crash to about a year and six months after the crash. Dr. Fong will testify in this case via video deposition because she had to, she couldn't be here for trial also. She has a conference in the Netherlands because she treats patients around the world and is a known uh, treater of people with persistent uh, post-concussive symptoms, which is basically a, a brain injury. So after this litigation began, uh, after 2019, Terry went to s uh, see a neuropsychologist, Dr. Wendell Gibby of Utah, who has examined and scanned thousands of patients with injured brains. Uh, a neuroradiologist is a medical doctor who specializes in uh, uh, radiology, everything from x-rays to MRIs to CT scans, and his specialty is also in neuroradiology, examining the brain but he also examined the chest x-rays that were taken at the VA. And we asked Dr. Gibby, how bad is it? Dr. Gibby says, it's bad. His brain is permanently injured. He has persistent post-concussive symptoms. Although we can treat him, he will certainly have problems with his brain function the rest of his life. Well, Dr. Gibby, the defense says Terry's problems are pre-existing and his brain problems were there before the crash. Well, that's because, that's what they always say about permanent brain injuries. Terry suffered a significant concussive brain injury in this ski crash. The injury is permanent. In other words, Terry will have problems with his brain the rest of his life. Well, uh, doctor, the defense says he has pre-existing brain issues such as NPH when he had the brain scan in 2009, seven years before the crash. NPH is normal pressure and uh, hydrocephalus. Basically, it's when your brain has too much fluid in the canals of the brain or the ventricles, and it builds up and it presses on your brain. It may actually make you more susceptible to problems from a concussion, but many people go their whole life without any symptoms and they never know they have MPH unless they get a brain scan. Well, the, the evidence will show that Terry Sanderson had no symptoms of NPH prior to the ski crash. Dr. Gibby says because Terry was asymptomatic or had no symptoms before the crash, the brain injury he suffered in the ski crash is the cause of his current problems. 
not MPH. Well, the defense is three medical doctors. The defense has hired three MDs and two PhD neuropsych neuropsychologists say, well, the MPH is causing his problems. And Dr. Gibby says, well, I'm not sure what they're thinking, but this ski, ski crash caused uh, Terry's current problems. Further, like Dr. Bain, Dr. Gibby thinks it's highly unlikely that Ms. Mr. Sanderson um, hit Ms. Paltrow. The, the way he sustained the injuries to his ribs um, is more likely than not caused by Ms. Paltrow landing on his back when he, Terry Sanderson hit the ground. When they, when she rode his back after the ski crash. Then we talked to uh, Dr. Sam Goldstein, a neuropsychologist who has a clinic in Salt Lake City who treats patients with brain injuries. He's been treating people like this for decades. We asked Dr. Goldstein, what can you say about Terry's injuries? The defense says it's more likely dementia or um, NPH or other problems. Well, Dr. Goldstein says, well, it's, it's permanent and significant, this, this injury he had uh, when Ms. Paltrow hit him, because his family and friends and the people he knows before and after the crash report that he had very few problems before the crash, but after the crash, he has very significant problems. Because of that, we know, and because it's lasted for years, more than a year and a half, and now it's been lasted for seven years, we know he has persistent post-concussive symptoms. Goldstein says, yes, most people recover, but in a situation like this, where Ms. Paltrow denies she caused his injuries, it's like his frustration digs into his frontal lobes, so to speak, and his problems are permanent. Yes, he can alleviate them with treatment and medication, but he will have problems all his life. And these problems didn't exist to the, uh, before the crash. They came after the crash. And there is objective data that his ability to cope with life is diminished. Well, these doctors, Dr. Bain, Fong, Gibby, and Goldstein, you'll hear testimony from, two of them by videotape. Um, and most doctors like them say that the most important, some of the most important pieces of evidence for understanding brain injuries are these before and after witnesses. Again, these are people who knew t uh, Terry before and after the crash. You, the jury, will hear testimony from some of them like his two daughters, and uh, either today or tomorrow, you'll also hear from uh, Carlene Davidson, the girlfriend Terry had at the time of the crash. They'd been together about a year and a half, and uh, they spent a lot of time together. Uh, Miss Davidson spent maybe three out of four weeks with Terry Sanderson in Salt Lake City. They traveled the world together, Carlene Davidson knew Terry really well and uh, she'll report on what happened after Terry or after the crash to Terry. A couple of things I'd like to discuss with you. The media has not been accurate. No Deer Valley ski employee saw the ski crash. Now some employees no, saw some, some people saw Your the Honor, crash. I am going to object to referencing outside media. Yeah, sustained, that's not going to come into okay. the case. Some people, uh, the Deer Valley employees did not ski the, see the ski crash. The Deer Valley employees saw some things before the crash and some things after the crash. Uh, Craig Ramon is the only eyewitness who actually saw the crash. You're going to hear from him uh, later today. He'll be the first witness. 
Now, after this crash, well, before this crash, Terry was a charming, outgoing, gregarious person. He volunteered for many things. He was a retired eye doctor. He had moved from southern Idaho to Salt Lake City about 10 years ago. He was living a full life, traveling the world, doing everything possible to enjoy his life and guard his health. He did not want a brain injury. He did everything possible he could to fix his brain injury. But after the crash, he's no longer charming. The before and after witnesses will show you this. We asked Terry to step out during this part because I didn't want to rub his nose in his own problems. And during other parts of testimony from his daughters and some of the other before and after witnesses, Terry won't be in the courtroom. At the, at the end of this trial, the evidence will have clearly and convincingly established that the value, not the cost, but the value of the damages done to Terry Sanderson is $3,276,000. We look forward to showing you all of the evidence. Thank you, Mr. Bueller. Mr. Owens? Can we, uh, short break, can we have a five minute break? And I do want to address one thing with the court. Okay. Why don't we take a short recess between the lawyers' opening statements? So thank you. I want to renew the instruction number 45 for the defense. This court has found that there is insufficient evidence to assert a hit and run. They didn't use the words hit and run, but they said she bolted. And this jury is under the misimpression that that, that is an issue in this case. It's not an issue. That was ruled on summary judgment. All that remains is a negligence claim. One can't be negligent for bolting from the scene of an accident. That's an intentional conduct. So uh, I ask for that instruction right now, even. Your Honor, witness, the first witness, those are his exact words. And he's testified that in front of, and it's been provided to defense counsel before the litigation, during the litigation, in a deposition. His deposition lasted six hours, and the defense interrogated him on this, and he never changed his testimony, and that's his testimony. Now, uh, they can quibble with the testimony and dispute the testimony, but I did not use the word hit and run. Uh, Eric Christensen came up. People asked, are you okay? The, the evidence is, um, will, will show that what I said in the opening is accurate per the only eyewitness, Craig Ramon. Uh, you know, obviously, the concern is is that um, is that it may go, is that there may be an implication that it goes to duty, and um, as long as you're not making an implication that she had a duty to do something different, um, the, the the testimony of the witnesses is what the testimony of the witnesses is. You can ask your questions, you can point things out, you can make your arguments, uh, but my ruling on on the uh, instruction 45 will stand. Thank you. Short five minute break.
Are we ready for the jury? Mr. Owens, you ready? Yes. Okay. Mr. Owens. Members of the jury, thank you for being here, partly against your will. It's a beautiful thing, uh, the law. Uh, when people are in big disputes, our system, both our U.S. Constitution and our state constitution, allows these disputes to be done openly, publicly, and by a jury of one's peers. And I think it's a beautiful thing. It's slow. A lot of people complain about lawyers. But um, no one gets hurt uh, in terms of we don't burn people's houses down. We don't do acts of violence. Uh, and, oddly enough, if a jury, if a trial is done right, even the losing party feels that they were heard and understood and that uh, they feel some sense of peace. So, if you can't tell, this is a big deal to the parties and it's really special that you were chosen. You should feel complimented and perhaps one day you'll tell your children and grandchildren, I was selected for a jury. And it was an honor to serve. And I helped my community by trying to figure out a difficult problem that the parties have. And so I thank you for that. Even in Greece, ancient Greece, they used to resolve problems like this. Big disputes, bring in some criminal, some are civil. That essentially means, can someone go to jail for it? That's criminal. Is someone asking for money? That's civil. So this is a civil claim. And uh, they would gather the people and listen to the dispute. So this is a, a very historic uh, tradition. The burden of proof is one of your statements here from the judge. And I just want to comment on it. Burden of proof is a weighing of evidence. So I put before you Lady Justice. If you're ever in Salt Lake, go to the Salt Lake and City County building and look up. And it's this statute, although this is not the exact statute of her. Um, but you've seen this around, and I've, I, I've done another one for you here that I, I like to keep in my office. All right, so what's important about this? She's blindfolded. So one of the judge's instructions for you was no sympathy, passion, or prejudice. You're not to award anyone anything because you feel sorry for them. This is important because over the next two weeks, we're going to hear a lot about uh, Terry Sanderson's mental and physical health, both before the ski collision 
and after the ski collision. And you're going to feel sorrow for him. But we're not here. I can feel sorrow, too. But that's not why you're here. You're here to figure out if someone negligently crashed into someone or if no one did. And I think the law will permit you to decide that no one was at fault. Unlike a car accident or something, a ski collision is different. There are inherent risks of skiing. I know when I get on the top of the tram at Snowbird, and it's a gusty day like today, and I say, if I don't do this right, I could kill myself. I mean, it's, it's a breathtaking, wonderful, exhilarating, but also a little dangerous, isn't it? That we're strapping on pieces of wood or fiberglass on our boots, and we're going down a very snowy, icy hill. So that happens. Maybe some of you have been hit. I've been hit skiing. It was disorienting. It was unhappy. I was unhappy, to say the least. Uh, but I did recognize it as an inherent risk. I mean, OK, let me, let me move on on that. So the blindfold. The blindfold is, I'm not going to do this because I feel sorry for someone. Then the scales. Mr. Sanderson has brought the claim. As a result, he has to tip the scale. Okay, The tie means plaintiff does not win. The tie goes to the defendant. So they have to tip. That's who brought the claim. That's the weighing. And then you see the sword. Now. The sword can be, I'm seeking justice, so I'm proactively fighting it. And sometimes Lady Justice is actually seen with a shield. Let me suggest that that sword is being used to defend a meritless claim, a false allegation, really kind of an offensive one, uh, that uh, she somehow left him an unconscious man and bolted and, and uh, it's, it's, I can tell you, we believe it to be utter BS. Objection, Your Honor. Argument. You're supposed to present what he's going to show, not, not argue it. We believe it to be. It's fair, arg it's fair isn't it? Oh, sustained. It, it is bordering on argument, counsel. Thank you. Thank you. He's suing for $3 million. Okay. Let's, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'm going to hit damages later. I, I want to I hit the merits of the case first. So the burden of proof, I wanted to emphasize. And then uh, instruction 11 says, don't abandon your common sense. So this can look, you're going to hear from brain experts and uh, a lot of people to talk about this. But don't abandon your common sense. That, that's very important. I also want to just reference to you that uh, you should pay attention more to the records before someone's thinking lawsuit than the records after someone's thinking lawsuit. Objection, argument, Your Honor. This, this is an open statement. This is argument. Sustained. You're going to see a lot of records about uh, what was going on before and during, and then after. Some of the records before indicate that Terry Sanders had brain issues before. In fact, there was a prior MRI. Now, let me hit the accident, because I, I don't. I'd be silly to address other issues. Let me explain what was happening. And can you find that second picture? Ms. Paltrow has sentimental feelings about skiing. Her dad, who uh, left this life too early, took her skiing as a kid at Alta. She grew up learning to ski, and those are very sentimental trip. In fact, after her dad died in his 50s, she didn't ski for a long time because it was an emotional uh, thing for her. 
That is Miss Paltrow. That is Gwyneth on the right. That is her son, Moses, on the left on the very day of this ski accident. All right, so they're going up. And uh, this was also, so it was a sentimental issue because she had started getting back into skiing. And she did it because she wanted her kids to learn like she had. Another thing, she had a boyfriend at the time who's now her husband. And he has kids the exact same age as Gwyneth's daughter and son, oddly. The daughter is the same age as the daughter, and the son as the son. And this was really their first trip to sort of have a mixed, see if this might work. So uh, it was a special time, and it was a lovely day. So some uh, ski events, we worry about, is the sun in someone's eyes? No one's saying that. Is it a snowy day? No. It was a nice day. How about, was it slick run? No. It was a nice groomed run. How about was a really complex hill? No, it wasn't, wasn't the bunny hill, but bandana, who maybe some of you know, I mean, it's, it's a green hill. Um, and so none of those factors kind of come into play. Moderately busy. And she's skiing, uh, again, with a group. So her group is she, Brad, now her husband, who you're going to hear from, her daughter, Apple, who you're going to hear from, Moses, who you're going to hear from, and then uh, some Deer Valley people. Now, these weren't her people. These were Deer Valley instructors. I could have hired Eric Christiansen that day, just as Gwyneth did. Uh, and, uh, and then Brad has two kids, and they had ski instructors. So th that was their group. It was kind of a loose group. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, they went to the top. They met at the top of Bandana with the plan. This was about 11.30, 11 a.m. Uh, we're going to go down and have lunch. I think it's the Empire Lodge, if I'm not mistaken. OK, so we're going to all kind of ski down. Um, Gwyneth is a conservative skier. She always skis on the far right. So if it's like a highway, fast people go on the left. I don't know if it's the same, but it's far right, and then kind of small curves. Um, and she's not, she's generally watching her kids, but she's not specifically watching because they're, uh, they have their instructors. She's skiing. Enjoying herself, and she hears, suddenly she sees two skis appear between her skis. And a man comes up right behind her. Now, they're not going fast. That's kind of the odd thing here. He comes up almost body to body like this and starts groaning. She doesn't know what's going on. What's going on? Am I being assaulted? She's moving forward. And then she's like, they, they are, begin falling to the right. And she's uh, feeling freaked out, I think is a fair statement. And he hits down, apparently. Uh, his side and his head, and she is essentially falling on him. But keep in mind, his skis are intertwined now with hers. Her first reaction is, get away from this. And so she's pulling, trying to get away. What has just happened? Now, she only has to think about this for a few seconds to realize, OK, I'm not, I'm not being assaulted. But this fellow, she had a more colorful word, has just run into me. And she said, what are you doing? Or words to that effect. And he, he's like, I, words to the effect, I didn't see you. And then there's a question, well, who ran into who? And he says, did you, or you ran into me? And Gwyneth's like, no, 
You ran square right into me. And he said, I'm sorry. He doesn't deny saying, I'm sorry. He doesn't remember it, but he doesn't dispute it. Now, she's still ticked off. In fact, uh, much has been said about the so-called uh, only eyewitness. So you're going to hear from him this afternoon. I don't have to give you a commentary on him. But he will say he heard and turned. He heard and turned. That's what the Deer Valley guy says. Eric Christiansen, one of the instructors, said he heard and turned and, and then saw. So uh, I'll comment just a minute more on Mr. Ramon in just a minute. You'll hear about him. Back to Gwyneth's story. She's, so she's backed up. She's safe. Eric's on the scene. He's helping people get their skis off. And uh, he's trying to figure out what happened. Now, Eric, Eric, backing up, they started at the hill. This is at the very beginning of the hill, by the way. It's not halfway down. It's not three-fourths down. It's the first quarter down. He's trying to figure out what happened. But he had seen Gwyneth go down. Then Terry, who, who was cutting across the, the whole thing. If I'm misstating it, we're, we're going to have to we're defer to their testimony when they testify, but I'm trying to give you a big picture. He's, he's making a wide, uh, much wider turning. And guess what? He's blind in one eye and has decreasing vision in his left eye. He has hearing aids. He's had heart, stroke, uh, many other medical conditions. Just weeks earlier, he had told his doctor, I'm feeling old suddenly. Uh, and Terry's story, by the way, is that he's, he's coming across, and he sees a struggling younger woman, uh, not younger, a, young, a struggling female skier. And he's trying, he wants to be really clear to stay away from her. So he's, he's actually turning his head to clear the beginner skier. And what happens? He comes right upon Gwyneth. He's back, turns with his better eye. And uh, suddenly, she's there. So the Deer Valley report, do you mind? By the way, Deer Valley is not a party to this lawsuit. The court dismissed Deer Valley. So Gwyneth's not Deer Valley. Deer Valley stands on its own. Objection to argument, Your Honor. Overruled. Deer Valley stands on its own. And uh, uh, I don't know if they're going to assert like there's some massive cover up or what. But Objection or argument? Sustained. OK, uh, back one, I think, James. By the way, I think the goal is to give everyone a little better access with these little screens, but it, it hasn't worked out today. So Eric Christiansen, remember, he hears and he turns, and he goes directly over there. He's there within seconds. And he's, he's seen what happened. And what does he say? Can you blow up the first half? Chief complaint, male skier took her out from behind. He's, he's putting this together. And then let's do the bottom thing. And then we won't, we won't focus on exhibits anymore really today on this. But first thing male skier said, does that say said? I can't read it. Anyone? Stated. Stated. Was that she appeared right in front of him, thus admitting that he was the uphill skier. She never saw him because he came in from behind. That was the evaluation from the Deer Valley skier. 
from the Deer Valley instructor. Interestingly, Eric's trying to figure out, Eric Christiansen, the ski instructor, is trying to figure out, all right, what's the first question, by the way? Everyone okay? Everyone okay? Now, they were both, uh, any collision, you take a body blow, it takes a little while to gather your senses, recognize, okay, I'm safe, okay. But uh, his answer was, he was okay. And um, he was on his feet. This took minutes. Gwyneth uh, was not happy still. Moses, who you're going to meet, he's now 16, but he was a nine-year-old at the time, was with his instructors. Instructor started to come over. Moses came over, and he saw his mom, and he was worried. He hadn't seen his mom. First of all, she's on the ground, and she's yelling at this guy. Um, he, she might have said something like, what the F word? And I think she might have said the F word. We're going to figure that out. And she's mad. And he said, I haven't seen my mom like that. And he was sort of personally a little upset. All right. And then, uh, OK, everyone's OK. Everyone's OK. And Eric Christiansen, the ski instructor, said, a ski patrol person, who's different than the instructor, a ski patrol person came by and said, everyone OK? And he said, Mr. Sanderson and Craig Ramon, who you're going to meet this afternoon, talked to each other and said, we're OK. And they, wait, they said, we're OK, and the ski patrol left. All right. Now everyone's OK. And then I think Eric Christiansen, OK, he, Gwyneth, you can go. Join your family. By the way, your family's waiting for her at the bottom. Brad, interestingly, had heard it and looked up and saw his wife on the, now wife on the ground, and had come back up. And she had skied down to be with him, not to leave. By the way, you'll never hear the words hit and run in this whole trial. This was not a hit and run. The plaintiffs even had a ski expert evaluate it, and he said, it's not a hit and run. So take, take that out of your mind. All right, so uh, all right. now what's going on? OK, everyone, everyone's good to go. Everyone went. Terry, oh, right before he left, apparently, Eric Christiansen said, your buddy just took out Gwyneth Paltrow. They didn't even, no one knew who she was. By the way, she had a helmet and goggles and everything. Guess who doesn't, doesn't who denied that? Craig Ramon, their so-called first skier, has a whole different crazy story. Uh, that Objection, that, argument, Your Honor. That is argument. O overruled. Oh, then not, then I, Reassert my crazy <laughs> comment. All right, so uh, I'll continue the story. Everyone's good to go. Good, good to go. Okay, then they now hear she's Gwyneth Paltrow, and uh, they like, okay, well let's let's ski down. So they ski down a ways further, and Terry, I shouldn't call him Terry, <coughs> Mr. Sanderson. Uh, does not feel good. He, he, he feels confused, he says. So uh, you'll hear them like, well, let's, let's get a ski patrol person now. We had previously waved one off, but now we, we've changed our mind. We need ski patrol. Toboggan person comes named Whitney. Uh, and she, she pulls up, and, they, and the first thing Whitney says is, what happened? And Mr. Sanderson says, I don't know. I'm not sure. He did not say, I was just hit. Interestingly, Craig Ramon, the friend, 
uh, did not correct that statement. So Craig Ramon, by the way, never once told Eric Christiansen he hit, excuse me, she hit him. Didn't say one word about it. Uh, didn't say we need help. Part of this crazy story is he says Sanderson, Mr. Sanderson, was out cold for two minutes, unconscious. Now, do you know how long it is to look at a person who might be like dead or dying for two minutes and not do one thing? He didn't do anything. It's, it's not true. Everyone on the scene was saying, absolutely. If he, was, if he was out, it was for seconds, not two minutes. Christy Anson's going to just ignore someone who's out cold. He's saying, I'm OK. He's on his feet. He's declining ski patrol. Very different story than someone who's out cold. I said, did you start CPR, like where you check his breathing and stuff? No, I, I, I didn't do any of it. it. You'll see there are a lot of ridiculous things, I think, about it. Objection, it, Your Honor, an argument. Sustained. Gwyneth didn't have a helmet. He says Gwyneth didn't have a helmet or a face mask or, or a goggles on her. She had, she had those things. She doesn't go around skiing. She, she's safe conscious, and she's probably a little celebrity conscious about, like, I don't, I don't do that. So anyway, uh, we'll address that this afternoon more. But let me continue the story. So he's on the toboggan. Now, these, Whitney, this toboggan person's pretty smart. She goes, hey, I want you to remember, I'm going to tell you a few things, and I want you to remember them. And, and they're unique things. We'll get into it later. And at the bottom of the hill, she's checking them, and he, he remembers all of them. In fact, he posts. He's a poster. So he posts a very happy, smiling picture of the toboggan person and a very articulate comment repeating, like she went to Michigan, she won this ski thing, very detailed. And he posts it. OK, well, that's. That's nice, but it's not something you do if you've just suffered a major traumatic brain injury. <coughs> All right, so articulate, everything. At the bottom, he's talking, he's conversing. This isn't like garbled, garbled crazy talk where you think head injury is important. So uh, he, by the way, he takes a picture. So he likes to take pictures and post things on Facebook and everything of Ramon. And one of the women he was skiing with, and they're all smiles. Like, like you'd post, you wouldn't know, like this is taken by someone who just suffered a major head collision or something. And, and uh, boom, it's posted. OK, great. Uh, this is good, because we're getting real life things from him and his own fingers in his own head. Then he goes to an Instacare person. Uh, the Instacare person says, no signs of Confusion. Okay, that's a big issue, right? If we're worrying about. Uh, by the way, uh, there's a nurse on your panel, but I, I take it from our experts that you'll hear that if you hit your head and you say, I have confusion, essentially, you are diagnosed. I mean, you, are a con you have a concussion. I mean, so maybe it's more than that. I might be simplifying it. And forgive me if I am, because nothing I'm saying is evidence, but I'm trying to give you the story. So the guy there is like, OK, uh, uh, there, I can't rule out problems. So you should get a CT. A CT is imaging of the brain. And he ends up going to the VA hospital the next day. Uh, the, the CT, it's interesting. So he had this, he had a stroke-like event and lost his right eye. Uh, like six years earlier. So we have imaging of his brain six years earlier. And guess what? There are defects in that new CT. But guess what? They were there before. They were there before. 
And guess what their experts didn't do? Go back and look to see if the problems in his current imaging is present on his six-year-old CT of the brain. It's kind of crazy. They're, they're interviewing him. He's telling them things. But no one's actually trying to go back and sort of say, look, is his brain, is his brain different? OK. You were going to hear from some daughters. By the way, there were, it was a reference to two daughters. He has three daughters. He's on the outs with that daughter. She paints a not that great story about him before the ski accident. Why do we dig into this? No one wants to dig into this. But if a 75-year-old man says, I don't think as well as I used to. My brain doesn't work as well as I used to. I forget things. We have to, which is why we're all here, we have to go back and look at these things. If he says, my relationships were harmed by Gwyneth, we have to go back. It's kind of a deep dive and say, what were your relationships like before this? And it's not pleasant. I mean, like half of the trial is going to be on this kind of stuff. Because if someone says, I have a severe $3 million brain injury caused by you, we have no, I have a lawyer, lawyer obligation to represent my client and say, what's true? And I'm telling you, he does have confusion. He does have strained relationships. He does forget some things. But guess what? It's, it's a normal aging and his pre-existing problems coming forward and progressing. Back to the story. So I uh, Instacare, they say, go get a CT uh, uh, tomorrow. And then he posts. And let's put that up. So he's a poster. Okay, big on Facebook, so there are lots of pictures of him, which helps us. It helps us understand him. What does he post to his daughters? I'm famous. He doesn't post, I'm hurt. He doesn't post googly gawk, is that the right word? Confusing stuff. Could you highlight the bottom half? I'm famous. This is at 8, 8 PM. The accident had occurred just before lunch. So eight hours later, he's home. And then he said, here's what happened from my friend and eyewitness, this Craig. And he posts it. He posts it. Wouldn't, wouldn't you be interested to know what this post was in real time, this video or photo? It's apparently video. Objection argument. Your Honor, that's, that's, just, that's just trying to explain the evidence here. So you've got evidence. Uh, I mean, th th this is evidence that will come in? That it's not there. OK. Overruled as to that. Wouldn't we all like to know? Statement? I apologize. Were it OK? Yes. Wouldn't we like to know what this was? Objection argument, Your Honor. This is argument. Sustained. We it's nowhere to be found. We're in a courtroom seven years later trying to figure out what happened. It was right there, nowhere to be found. And then, can you do the hot, top half? This is his daughter. I can't believe this is all on GoPro. <clears throat> I can't believe this is all on GoPro. Where's the GoPro? Do we want it? We want it. It's nowhere to be found. I'm glad you're OK. He's telling his daughters, 
I'm okay. All right. We're trying to put together a lot of facts. You're going to hear, I don't know, like 20 people are going to come in, half of them medical people, and try to figure this out. It'll be interesting. I, I think after this trial, we'll go, that was cool, actually. You, you learned a lot. And you, you, you are given to our community. But about half of the information you're going to hear, if you find that Gwyneth did not cause the accident, you can actually can disregard all the damages talk. So we're going to hear a week of evidence on Terry's brain, Mr. Sanderson's brain. But if you find no negligence by Ms. Paltrow, then you can disregard all that. Your Honor, I object. This is, this is a classic argument. Sustained. One dollar bill. Gwyneth was hurt by Mr. Sanderson's negligence. When he came up behind her, paralleled her, and went, she says her, she has a knee, she has a prior knee problem. She was worried about it. She separated from him with help. Then boyfriend came up, and she is upset. She has uh, anyone sustaining a blow is is upset. She's sore. She never went to a doctor, but for this, by the way, but. She was, it rattled her, and it physically hurt her. When they were dismissed, they went down to the bottom of the hill. And who was waiting for her? Her daughter, Apple, now 18, then eight, I think. No, no, no. 11. 11. Sorry, I got that mixed up. So, and Apple's like, what took you so long? And she said, some a-hole just ran into me. I think she used the real word. All right, why is this important? She didn't say, I just ran into someone. She was mad. And over lunch, she was mad. And then after lunch, she said, that guy kind of hurt me. <coughs> And I'm not going to ski the rest of the day. There's even a text from Gwyneth's own phone to Eric Christiansen. And they're like, Moses wants to know if you're coming. I'm going to go in. I, that guy kind of hurt me. And she went in. And she lost her full day pass that she had paid for. And she only got to ski half a day. In addition, she had paid for her instructor, who now was diverted from teaching her son, Moses, to take care of, of this collision issue. And so we ask you for a dollar. Now, this is a lot to go through for a dollar. But it's an actual dollar, because she, she had come with her family to enjoy a family vacation. Objection, no, this is again argument. This is classic argument. These are facts. This is closing argument. O o overruled as to the comments that are being made right now. Those are facts. Yeah, and let's keep the interruptions to a minimum, would we? Well, don't argue then. Well, counsel, go, go ahead. I mean, the, the objections have been valid, some of them. So uh, she came for a family vacation. Half the afternoon was kind of ruined. And so that dollar is important to us. It's important to my client. Let me hit a few other things. You've been very patient. I think I said, it's hard to unpack someone, a 75-year-old, who says, 
I don't think as well as I used to. Heaven help me if my daughters were called to the stand and they say, hey, let's talk about all your dad's mental quirks and problems and his physical health and his deterioration as he ages. I, I wouldn't want to be present for that. Uh, it would be hard. And yet, we're here because Mr. Sanderson is making that, that allegation. And so we have to do it. So I don't want to look like I'm beating up on a, on a, a kindly old man. But keep in mind, we have to do this because they have uh, said, Gwyneth owes me $3 million. I mean, we have to address that. So I kind of apologize in advance. Mr. Sanderson threw a press conference, and he said, Gwyneth. Objection, Your Honor. This is, this is irrelevant. This is factual. It's also argument. This S is factual. S sustained. There, there hasn't been. Would you please approach? Sanderson said, three years later, she came out of the jungle like King Kong, screaming. When asked in real time by Gwyneth, he said, I apologize. I'm sorry. When asked by the ski instructor, he said, she appeared right in front of me. And when asked by the toboggan person, he said, I don't remember. I don't know. Or I'm not sure. Mr. Sanderson said, his memories of this case get better over the years. That's all I'm going to say about that. That's not how memory works. One more comment on damages. Plaintiffs, he was a vet. We, we salute him for that. He went to the VA. And he went at one month. He went at one year. And I guess one year in two months and one year at three months. OK, so three different assessments, neuropsych assessments. This is where a, a smart person is trying to figure out. And he is saying, I'm more confused since the ski accident. And they're doing testing on him. These are not hired experts, like many of the people you're going to hear. These are his VA people, and he's complaining and they're doing assessments on him. And what does he do? Above average, above average, above average, above average, above average. A year and two months, high IQ, high verbal comprehension, high perceptive reasoning, working memory is average, processing speed average, overall cognitive ability intact. One year and three months later goes to someone else. These are three different people. Three different people. He's alert. His affect is appropriate. His speech is normal. His thought process is logical, linear, and goal-oriented. All good. His perception, no disturbance. Attention, concentration, within normal limits. Recent memory, within normal limits remote memory within normal limits. 
all normal or above normal? I, uh, these are the not the hired people. Let me just say that. Back to Lady, lady uh, Justice, please. I am finishing up. <coughs> Plaintiff said, if these are my notes in his opening, she was dangerous and reckless. She's skiing with her nine-year-old son, who's a beginner, just so you know. Dangerous and reckless. You you decide. We need your, your help. The community. Uh, Objection, Your Honor. This is argument again. Sustained. Thank you. Watch me ski. There was a comment somehow she was distracted. Uh, Gwyneth doesn't remember that. The kids don't remember that. But if if I guess someone says, "Hey, look at me, look at me," but these these aren't like three year olds at a swimming pool, and. She, she is focused, she is not distracted. She got taken out from behind. I mean, that's what happened. And uh, that's enough on that. His posts, so again, we can curse public media or uh, social media, but it does do one thing well, doesn't it? It's like sort of documents people. <laughs> and he's a poster. So guess what? He went on traveling all over the world after this. After this. Like 10 trips all over the world. And we'll talk about that. I'm not even talking about the domestic trips, which he did those too. But I'm talking about big, long, international trips. He go, does yoga. He swims. He stays fit. His life is not a, a disaster. Your Honor, I object. Here's the argument again. O overruled? Our experts, you will hear from them, and I won't go through name by name. Two are Eastfold and Askenazi. These are smart people who are trying to put everything together and are just saying, so he's aging, he has prior problems, and he's now obsessed, essentially, with this lawsuit. I mean, I think the best thing after this is over, this will be a good thing, win or lose, I think. Objection, Your Honor. That's an argument. Sustained. They will say that. Our experts. Objection, Your Honor. Our experts will say that. Is that objectionable? No. You've been very kind. I'm going to end here with uh, Lady Justice. So the blindfold you get, we're not going to feel sorry for him. We're not going to make our decision on that. The weighing of evidence, they have, to, they have to have more evidence than not. And the sword, we are defending a false allegation. And we need your help. And Your thank Honor, you so much for argument. doing it. Should be sustained. I'm done. And uh, overruled just a, a little latitude there. That's about 10 overruled objections during my closing, which uh, I think it's inappropriate, Your Honor. Why don't we approach the bench, please?
Okay, we're going to take our noon recess at this time. I, I've been informed that lunch will be available for the jurors. Um, just to let you know, the parties have agreed to split the cost of lunches so that you don't have to try to travel out uh, to go find lunch. You're certainly welcome to go if you'd like, but um, lunch will be provided for you and we'll reconvene at 1 p.m. Thank you. Anything for the for the court? Council? Okay, we'll see you at one PM. Thank you.
We ready for the jury counsel? Okay. Okay, we're ready.
Okay, good afternoon, everyone. We're ready for our first witness, Mr. Sykes. We are. And who would that be? Craig Ramon. Mr. Ramon, if you could come forward, please. And walk right over here, sir, and be sworn in as a witness. Do you swear that the testimony you are about to give in the case now before the court will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. And then right around over here, sir. Yeah, kind of adjust that to get comfortable, okay? <laughs> uh, please state your full name and your home address. Craig James Ramon. Ramon. And uh, how old are you, sir? Um, 58. Okay. Uh, where did you go to high school? Uh, Cottonwood High School. And that's in Salt Lake City or Salt Lake County? Salt Lake. Okay. And <laughs> tell us about your work background. <clears throat> well, when I was 18, um, I went to work for a glass company called uh, National uh, 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 Natco Glass. Worked there for about a year and a half. <clears throat> and then from there, I quit, and then I went to work at, S at Central Glass okay. and, uh, for about a year and a half. That's in Salt Lake City? <coughs> yes. Downtown, okay. And then from there, I started my own glass company. What was it called? Uh, Craig's Glass. Okay. And I, and I started that about 20, 21 years old. And then I, um, I bought some commercial property when I was about 24, and I built a commercial building. And uh, then when I, when I moved into the, the co commercial building, I ended up uh, uh, changing the name to A1 National Glass. About what year was that, roughly? <coughs> Approximately. 87. Okay. And um, were you the owner, sole owner? Yes. Okay. Uh, and uh, just so the jury understands the basic background, what, what kind of glass did A1 uh, do? Auto glass. So auto glass that was their specialty. Yes. Okay. <coughs> okay. Um, and uh, how long did you work with A1? Eighty-seven uh, until about what year? Uh, Two thousand thirteen. Okay. What happened then? Um, I basically sold out and retired. Okay. And so you, when you sold out and retired, you were fifty. Um, I was forty-eight. Forty-eight. Okay. Uh, do you need to work now? No. So so you don't work now. No. Okay. Um, what do you do now during during this during the uh, winter uh, in the winter in the winter in the winter time I like to ski, okay. and then in the summertime I like to travel and and uh, scuba dive. Uh, travel and scuba dive. Yes. Okay. Now and skiing, just so they get an idea of your your ski ability, um, what um, what year did you start skiing? I started when or I was what about, age I should say I started when I was about five years old. Okay. And uh, by the time you, you finished high school, what level were you? Um, okay. An expert. I actually, at skiing, Yeah. Um, I was an expert. I actually competed in freestyle. Freestyle? Uh, yeah. Well, you, was your objective to go to the Olympics at some point? The, the Olympics were starting to come around at that time, yeah. and, and I wanted to shoot for the Olympics. Okay. But that never happened. All right. So, some may be skiers, some not. There's a beginner, obviously. Intermediate would be number two, advanced, yes, and expert, yes, and you're in the expert, yes, okay. Um, roughly in the last say four or five years, how many days did you ski per year during those years? Uh, the, the, the most I've skied was, was 154, and in they, one year, one, one ski season, one ski season, okay. and this, this year I'm, I'm about 70. Okay. And there's still snow up there, right? Okay. There's a lot of snow. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, uh, travel. Tell the jury some of the places you've traveled. Uh, South, Af South Africa, uh, Papua New Guinea, uh, uh, Sydney, Australia, um, Bangkok, um, Phuket, Thailand, Maldives and the Indian Ocean, Palau, uh, Galapagos Islands. Quito, Ecuador, the Amazon rainforest, uh, uh, Costa Rica, Cocos Islands, uh, uh, 
Can Cancun, Cozumel, uh, uh, Bahamas. Uh, you're, making Grant you're making me jealous now. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so quite a few places. Yes. And, and how many? How, how often have you been scuba diving on those trips? Most of them are scuba diving, and uh, okay, but, yeah. But, right. but what I like to do is, I, a lot of times, <clears throat> I like to go to. Some background. Some, some background is appropriate. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. And so, what well, could, could you repeat that? You know, I uh, let's see. Oh, I'm trying to so so the, the a lot of times what I like to do is like for instance uh, I went to Bangkok and then <clears throat> and then from there I went over to, to Phuket to, to scuba dive. Okay. So they're both in. in so China. sometimes you would combine an overseas trip with a scuba dive. Yeah, the okay. the only time I ever went on a trip that wasn't for associated with, with scuba diving was South Africa, and that was an African safari. Uh, tell the jury, if you would, how you know Terry Sanders. <clears throat> um, my girlfriend at the time, uh, well, Terry Sanderson, he he started a, a meetup group at at Alta and so stop a second. There may be some that don't know what a meetup group. Tell them what a meetup group is. Okay, meetup group it's 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 uh, a meetup group, it's meetup.com and uh, you can somebody can like for instance Terry, he he he's started a a, um, a group there and then you can sign up for, for this group. Anybody can sign up for for say skiing or pottery or hiking. And then if, if somebody wants to make it make a, a go skiing one day they'll say for instance um, we're going to be at Alta um, at nine o'clock at this lift and then anybody can go and so anybody can can go there's there's been people from out of the out of the out of the state that, that'll be in town for the weekend and they'll actually go and and uh, and uh, go, go to these meetup groups so yes. was this ski meetup group one that Terry started yes okay <clears throat> Uh, how many times did you ski with Terry before the ski crash, which is February 26, 2016? Um, about six. Six times? Yes. Okay. Uh, how would you, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, characterize him in terms of friendship? He's an acquaintance. Okay. He's, is he a good friend? Mm, no. Okay. Do you do a lot of things with him? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, before the, the day of the ski crash, uh, had you done anything with him other than six meetup groups? No. Okay. Now, um, I assume that you saw him skiing on each of those prior times, right? Yes. Tell the jury what kind of skier. Terry Sanderson was. Um, he was an advanced expert, I'd say. He's advanced. Advanced to expert. He 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 he'd skied um, one run with me. The uh, that it was an expert run. We were with a um, in a meetup group, and there was one guy that was really a good skier. We broke away from from the group because they were going to go to lunch, and we went up uh, by the Supreme Lift at, at Alta. And this and uh, this this uh, guy wanted to go down this really steep run and it was a really narrow and, and there's trees on both sides and it's really narrow and steep and long and this guy wanted to go down so he went down and then I was right behind him and, he and I went down and then Terry was right behind me and then we skied down to the bottom and he cut the, the guy that went down first got you know he stopped and then I was right behind him and Terry is right behind me I didn't see him skiing but he was on my tail all right and so uh, there may be some non-skiers here like I said uh, typically, how do beginners ski? Um, they ski well. They snow plow and then they'll go go back and forth across the ski run. Kind of, kind of the whole run sometimes, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Did Terry do any of that when you watched him? No. Okay. Uh, have you ever seen Terry, aside from the day of the crash, collide with anyone? No. Have you ever seen him bump into anything like at lunch or something like that? No. <coughs> Did you ever hear him complain he can't see? No. Uh, okay. Now, uh, 
Did you ever ski with Terry after the ski collision of February 26th? Yes, the, the, I, I skied with him uh, two times the next ski season of Alta. So that would be the 16-17 the ski season then, right? Yes. The December to April, let's say. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, okay. Uh, tell the jury how he skied then. He, he was having a hard time. He just, uh, he was snow plowing and he went, uh, he, his, uh, he went up, was kind of skiing with a girl named Robin and she, and she was a pretty good skier and, and he was snow plowing, having a hard time getting down, uh, down the hill and, and he kept asking me and, 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 and Robin, um, you know, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? And he, and he just, you know, he says, am I planting my poles right? And, and, you know, and he, he just. He just didn't didn't have it, and he just uh, he he didn't have it at all. He, he just was he wasn't the same scary as he as he was the uh, the previous year. Okay. Uh, do you know what the rules rules of the road are for skiing? Yeah, the the first thing is ski under under control. As a ski expert, I'm talking about just as a as a as a skier. Yeah, as a no, just just a second. I'm going to overrule it as to this witness's sure. personal knowledge as a skier and not as an expert Absolutely. in the rules of the road for skiing. Okay. Ski under control. Yes. Okay. What's another rule of the road? Uh, you you you. The downhill skier has the right of way. That sometimes said yield to the downhill skier. Uh, yield. Yes. Okay. Because downhill skiers don't have eyes in the back of their head, do they? No. Can't see you coming. No. Okay, what's another rule of the road? Uh, you never leave an accident. You know, if, if there's a, if two people are, uh, you know, collide, you, you never you never leave. You wait until you make sure everybody's okay, and then you you actually uh, give give in contact information uh, to each other. Exchange information. Yes. Let's uh, <coughs> go for. <coughs> but I apologize for my cough. I'm getting over a cold. I think so. Anyway. Um, let's uh, dive into <coughs> the bandana run on February 26, 2016. Okay? You have a good memory of that day? Yes. Okay. And uh, in your meetup group that day, how many were there roughly? Six. Okay. And uh, who was your ski companion that day? Pardon me? Who was your ski companion that day? Uh, Joanne. Okay. <coughs> and did you, when you rode up the lifts, did you ride together or separately? Um, we usually rode, rode together, but sometimes separately. Because there, there was, the, the lifts, they, help, they carry four people, and we mm -hmm. had six people. Okay. So. Uh, describe for the jury the kind of day it was, please. Uh, it was a sunny day. Okay. And so, uh, it was a Friday, wasn't it? Yes. Okay. And... Uh, how was the traffic that day, ski traffic? There was quite a few people. It was a busy day. Okay. Uh, did you go in the same chair, or can you remember, if you went in the same chair with Terry before the bandana run? Um, I don't remember if I went in the same chair. Okay, that day, was there anything <coughs> me, that Terry showed you or demonstrated that showed that he was impaired in any way that day? No. Okay. Uh, was he bumping into anything? No. Was he falling over? No. Any other ski problems that day? No. Now, um, to the point where there was a collision, okay, how far down from the top of the lift were you, roughly? Well, the collision happened probably, I'm guessing, maybe two, three hundred yards down from the top of the lift. Okay. And how far away were you when you noticed there was a collision from Terry? Um, probably about 35, 40 feet. Okay. Now, just to show, if I may, Your Honor, I'll do a good judge of distance. Okay. I'm going to hand you a construction, uh, what do you call this, the tape measure. Tape measure. There you go. I'm going to let you hold this, and I want you to tell the jury when I get out here. How far away this door is back here? Okay, now I'm at the courtroom door here. 
That's 43 feet. May the record reflect that I was at the inner door, not the outer door. Okay. So, so noted. And he <coughs> measured, we're measuring from the witness chair. Now, Mr. Ramon, see where I was standing with that door back there? Yes. And you had the end that showed the measurement, right? Yes. 43 feet? Yes. Okay. Tell the jury if that's about the distance it was away from yes. the point of impact. Yes, yeah, so that's about right. Uh, <clears throat> At any time that you saw Terry that day, was he doing anything other than parallel skiing? No. All right. Tell the jury, if you would, what you saw and heard that day at approximately 11.45 a.m., on February 26, 2016. Tell them what you saw. Well, we were skiing down, down um, the bend, uh, the, down the run, and then, and then I heard this, this, this yell, this, this, this scream, and then I looked over, and then about you know maybe one or two seconds, um, and then I heard the scream, and then, and then, and then I see this, this, this skier just slam into the back of Terry. And, when, and she just slammed him. How hard? Very hard. He, he, I mean, very hard. And so Terry, he, she hits him right directly in the back. And so then, uh, then his skis are like when you're skiing, you're skiing like this. His skis, his skis actually, the tips go out like this, and he falls <laughs> face down. So he's he's kind of he's kind of spread eagle, and he goes face down, and, and Gwyneth's on the top of him. And, and they go down like this, and then Gwyneth hits him, and then bounces off and slides to the right about five or ten feet. Now, at the time, you didn't know it was Gwyneth, did you? No. Found that out later. Yes. So the skier that hit him from behind hit him hard. Yes. And Terry goes down. Does he stop abruptly? Yes. Okay. <coughs> and how how loud was the scream? It was it was loud. How, how much time elapsed between the time you heard the scream and saw the collision? Uh, about a second or two. Okay. Now, uh, I'd like to ask you uh, to tell the jury, uh, and by, by the way, describe, excuse me for the cough, describe uh, what happened to the two bodies after you saw the collision, briefly. So, so the two, so the two bodies. So, so Terry stops, and then Gwyneth kind of slides down about five or ten. Top again, or the side or what? No, she bounced off the top of him, and then she she slid down to the to the right side, and she slid down um, about five or ten feet. And so, so she, so here's basically down. Now Terry's here, and Gwyneth's right here. What did you do? I went. I just I squeed skied down, and then I went on. To, to the left side um, of Terry. Were and you uphill or downhill from Terry? I was uphill. uphill. Well, well, I was I was down I, I was I was uphill, but then when I stopped, I was downhill. Um, I was about I was uh, I was about equal with Gwyneth, and so 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 Terry was when when Terry went down, Gwyneth slid to the to the down the down five or five or ten feet, and I came to the, the other side, and then I skied down. About and I was about down about five or ten feet, and so Gwyneth and I were basically when she got up, we were facing each other. How far away? Um, I would I would probably say maybe ten feet. Okay. Now, uh, how long did it take you to get over there to the scene? Oh, uh, just a, a second or two. Okay. All right. And uh, aside from Gwyneth, we now know it was Gwyneth. Didn't know at the time. And Terry, was there anybody else at the scene when you arrived? Anybody else at all? No. Okay. What did you do when you got to the scene? Tell the jury. 
Well, I when I when I got there, I just was asking Terry, "Are you okay? Are you okay?" And and, uh, and and Terry, he he wasn't he wasn't moving. His his face was actually in the snow, and and his 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 arms were out like this, and I mean his his helmet's stuck kind of in the snow, and so I'm asking him, and then and then Gwyneth gets up, and then I'm asking her, "Are you okay?" And uh, and and uh, and then and then from there. Um, 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 let, me, let me stop you there for a second. From there, at that time, did Gwyneth Paltrow, we now know it was her, say anything at all, utter any words at all to you? No, I asked her if she was okay, and she just looked at me, and then I asked her again. Now she was she standing up or down on the ground? Uh, she was. She was standing up. She got up pretty quick. Uh, did she talk to anyone else? No. Who came over. No. The entire time she was there, four minutes or so, whatever it was. Never did said. She, did she say anything? Any words come out of her mouth? No, no. Uh, what did Terry say, if anything? Uh, he wasn't talking. I mean, he just, he was, he 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 didn't even start moving for for probably a couple of minutes. Was he was he unresponsive or was he responsive? Uh, no, he was un unresponsive. Okay. Now, a few seconds after you got there, did someone else arrive, and who? Yeah, I, um, it's uh, Eric. He, he showed up. Eric Christensen. Yes. Spelled Christiansen, but he says Christensen, right? Uh, I'm not sure. You don't know. Okay. Don't know. Now, did Mr. Christensen ever introduce himself to you? No. You didn't know his name? No. Tell, tell the jury how he was dressed. He, he had a green uh, Deer Valley coat on. So he was an employee. Uh, tell the jury then what happened over the next 30 to 45 seconds. Tell the jury. Well, he, he came up and he, he came up to the left of me and, and, then, and then he starts yelling at Terry. And he's like, what'd you do? What did you do? And Terry's not moving. He's just not, he's not moving. His, his, face, his face down. And, and he keeps saying, what did, what did you do? And so, and so it got, and he was yelling when he came down, but then it just kept getting worse and worse, it kept getting, getting higher and higher. And it's like, what did you do? And so, so I just, I, I was getting, I, I, I Now, before you go any further, okay. describe for the jury the level of hostility that you observed from a green jacketed Eric Christensen toward Terry on the ground. He was very hostile. Describe it. He was just yelling, and he and he just and he, he was yelling to the point where I was thinking I didn't say anything, but I was thinking to myself, man, you need to mellow out here. And and so I, I got to the point where I was I was tired of it. I was concerned with that Terry. Terry's not moving, and so then I ended up because I was he was down a little bit a little bit lower than I was, so I just moved a few feet in front of him, so he was looking so he'd be yelling right at me. And then when I did that, he stopped yelling at him. Did the, host, the level of hostility concern you as a person? Yes. I, why. Well, well, Terry was out. I mean, he was, you know, and, and I, I was concerned about, you know, if Terry was, you know, what was wrong with Terry. And, and I just was, I didn't know how bad he was hurt. I didn't, and, and when, when, he, when he was yelling, I was just, it just, it, it just, it just, it just made me just. I, I didn't. I didn't know what to think. I didn't know, you know, just the, the, the way he was yelling. But I was, I was very concerned about Terry. But when you speed in between them, he calmed down. Yes, he, yeah, he stopped talking totally. Okay, tell us what else Christensen said uh, in that sequence. So that's direct hearsay. You know. Sustained. Okay. Um, did you did you at some point did you kind of, did you learn the name of the skier that hit Terry? Uh, uh, yes. Okay. Uh, and how did you learn that name? Well, well, she she ended up taking off and going down, mm -hmm. and then she came, she went down, and then she how cut, far? For, for, from where she was standing, she probably went down about 15, 20 feet. Okay. And uh, stopped. And she came around and stopped, and then and then. Then Eric said, "said uh, Gwyneth uh, Paltrow just took took out your buddy," 
and uh, I'm sorry, he said what? He said Gwyneth Paltrow just took out your 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 buddy. Oh, your buddy took out Gwyneth Paltrow. Which, which or, what you, uh, or, no, you, um, what no. What 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 did Christian say? Your Honor, let's let's make sure the witness is testifying and not the lawyer. I'll, I'll rephrase. What's the question? Yeah, and, and I'm talking about a rest gesti event here. Uh, uh, what did you hear at that scene at that time in this excited condition? What did you hear from whom? Well, well, well. He he told me that Gwyneth Paul, Gwyneth Paltrow. This is race gesti, Judge. Is it overruled. Thank you. Yeah, he um, Eric t told me that uh, Gwyneth Paltrow took out uh, Terry. Gwyneth Paltrow took out Terry. Yes. Okay. Was was he accusing Terry of taking out Gwyneth Paltrow too? No. Okay. All right. Uh, <coughs> did uh, 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 at at this time and before Miss Paltrow left the scene? Okay. Did she offer her name? No. Okay. Did she offer any contact information? No. Did she offer any identifying information? No. Okay. Did she ask if Terry was okay? No. Did she ask if Terry was hurt? No. Did she ask if anyone needed any kind of help? No. Did she ask if she could leave the scene? No. Okay. <coughs> now, you said she, she skied down a little bit. Uh, tell the jury what happened then. After she skied down uh, the hill 20 feet or so, like you said, what happened then? Yes, yeah, yeah, so th th that's, that, uh, so, she, so she stopped, and then, and then, and then that's, that's when I backed up, and, uh, well, I backed up, and, and that's when I backed up and, and, and was going to go down and, and, you know, and check on her. And then, then she just bolts and just takes off. And Where did she go? She just went straight down. And then there was, um, I, I, there was just went straight down. And there was a guy and, and, um, and, a, and, a, and a kid that was, I believe, was with, with, uh, with Gwyneth. And they actually stopped about 20, 25 feet above us um, on, on Terry's right side. So, this, so they were basically above above Gwen, about 20, 25 feet. Okay. And so then, so she takes off, and then, the, and then the kid actually comes down, and then he goes on the right side of Terry, and then the, 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 the guy, he came on the left side of Terry, and he sees right next to me, and he's looking at me, just goes real slow, and he's looking at me, and, and looking at me this in the eye. This is the adult for the kid. The adult, oh, okay. the, the adult comes by and gives me and just is giving me this really dirty look, and I was like, oh, I don't know why are you give me a dirty look. I just and he just slowly just skied by me, and then they both took off right after, after Gwyneth. Did the mountain host, Mr. Christensen, ever tell you that he saw what happened? He saw the impact. Did he ever tell you that? No, I, I asked him, but uh, no, he did not. Let me show you exhibit three. Before you put that out, is there an agreement to admit exhibit three? Let's get it out. These are all. I mean, you can hand it to the witness, but not show it to the jury until it gets admitted. Okay. Well. This is the one showed to the jury during opening statement by Mr. Oh, Owens. That's if that was the that's one. It's the, the one, one you showed during opening statement, Mr. Owens. Yes, sir. The uh, report. Yes, sir. Uh, of course. Okay. Is that, is that defense exhibit three, Mr. Sykes? I believe so. Okay. Defense exhibit three is received. Well, it's plaintiff's exhibit three. Plaintiff's exhibit three is received. You might have had a different number, but it's the same. It's the same. Okay, now, I don't know, uh, can I have my pointer? I use my pen as a pointer. Uh, I don't know if you can read this. Uh, it's a little hard to read. You want to step down here and take a look at it? Do you mind if I bend this forward? 
したらこちらから I didn't see it. Sykes. Can you hear him? Check it out here. No. Did you witness the accident? What does he say right here? No. Okay. Go ahead and do some of this. Did he tell you orally that he didn't see it too? Yes. Okay. Now, look at this. I'll ask you. I'm going to read this to you because it's kind of hard to read. Under additional comments, first thing, male, male uh, she stated was that she appeared uh, I can't read that. She appeared Can anybody read that? The word here? Right, there you go. Thank you. You're right. Okay, I'll read that again. Okay. First thing Mayoski stated was that she appeared right in front of her. Now, stop right there for a minute. The male skier is Terry Sanderson, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, the milk, milk skier, yes. Did you ever hear... So, I think this has been misread. <laughs> if, if we're going to read it, let's read it correctly. Well, I think, I think you can bring that out in cross-examination. Go ahead, Mr. Sykes. I'll read it again. First thing male skier stated was that she appeared right in front of him. Okay? <coughs> now, okay. I think I'm reading that correctly. The question for you. Mr. Ramon, did the male skier, i.e. Terry Sanderson, ever say anything like is reported here? No. Okay. Uh, and then he says, thus admitting that he was the uphill skier. See that? Did, did Terry Sanderson ever say he was the uphill skier? No, he did not. He never said that. Who was the uphill skier from what you saw? Uh, Gwyneth was. Uh, she never saw him because he came in from behind. Is that an accurate statement? Uh, she, so, no. I think that goes to the credibility of the statement. I think it's okay as a preface okay. in his question. Okay. No. Uh, <coughs> uh, some have claimed that Miss Paltrow was at the scene for eight minutes. What is your recollection of how long she was there? She was there for probably three or four minutes. Okay. How long was the mountain host there? Uh, probably about seven, eight minutes. Okay. Now let me ask you about Mr. Christensen uh, and ask you uh, if any of these things happened. Did Mr. Christensen ever ask either you or Terry your names? No. Did he offer any contact information for Glenn Paltrow? No. Did he ask for your contact information? No. Did he ask if Terry Sanderson was okay? No. Did he ask if Terry Sanderson was hurt? No. Did he ask if anybody needed help? No. Did he offer assistance? No. Did he offer to call Ski Patrol? 
No. Okay. Now, let me ask you, <clears throat> did he ask if it was okay for Ms. Paltrow to leave the scene without giving her contact information? No. Now, there was a mention in the opening statement, you weren't in the courtroom. I'm going to represent to you that Mr. Owens said that another uh, Deer Valley person came by during the whole sequence. Now, did you did another Deer Valley person come by while you were there? No, I never saw him. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what happened after the screaming was over? What 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 did people do? Well, not Miss Paltrow, but uh, Christensen and Terry. Well, it's, uh, Terry finally started to move, and uh, and then his skis. His skis are out like this, and his face is down, and so he, he needed to kind of get his skis back, and so he ended up at lifting his right ski up, I believe, and then moving it to the other side so his so his skis would be parallel. And 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 if if I would have been thinking straight, I would have taken his skis off for him, mm -hmm. but but I I, I didn't, and I, I just wasn't thinking. I was just wasn't thinking. And so then, so then he gets his skis, so his head's his face downhill, but his skis are still up, uh, um, or his face is downhill and his skis are uphill. And so then he slowly is just trying to, to move around and, and get his skis so they're downhill, so that, that way, you know, he can, he can get up. Okay. Now, uh, did Terry Sanderson, was he, describe for the jury at this point in time, <coughs> when, when you're, what, what you've just described. Describe Terry's mentation. Describe, that's a bad word. Des describe Terry's uh, 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 conduct and speech. Well, when he finally started to kind of move around a little bit, he was still out of it. And he, and he, he started to, the first thing he started to talk about was, he just, just says my ribs. He just, he was just complaining about his ribs. And that's, that's that's pretty much all he was saying. Was he able to have <clears throat> a conversation, really? No, he, he he couldn't even talk. Did he apologize to Miss Paltrow like has been represented? No. Okay. Did uh, Terry Sanderson tell Eric Christensen that he Terry Sanderson was okay? Could could you repeat yeah. that? Well, did Terry Sanderson say he was okay? Terry Sanderson never said anything. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> what other things can you describe about Terry's condition at that moment uh, during that sequence? Anything else? He, he just looked just totally out of it. He just looked like phased. Uh, he, he just, he looked like he was in a lot of pain. Was he making any sense? <clears throat> no, no. How about his mental status? Mental acuity. He was he was just out of it. He 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 was just out of it. Now, at some point, <coughs> did uh, Mr. Christensen leave the scene? Yes. Okay. Uh, now, what? Uh, tell the jury. <coughs> excuse me. What happened then? Mr. Christensen's gone. He skis off. What happens then? Well, well. Uh, before 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 he le before he left, Eric. Pulled, pulled Terry up, and then once Terry was on his on his feet, how did he pull him up? He 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 went. Uh, his, Terry's skis were downhill, and so he he went and he put his skis next to Terry's, and so he his skis couldn't slide. And then he uh, grabbed his his hand and, and yanked him up. And then once he was on his feet, then Eric just took off. He bolted to. Did Mr. Christensen do anything to make sure? There wasn't uh, a back injury or a neck injury before he grabbed his hands and pulled him up? No. Okay. okay, so you're standing there on the hill, bandana, alone with Terry Sanderson, correct? Yes. Tell the jury what happened then. Well, so we're standing there, and I'm talking to Terry, and he's, he's still not... He's still out of it, and I'm, you know, and I'm, at that point, I stopped asking if he's okay because he just wasn't okay. And so then I figured, 
you know, just, 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 let's just get down the hill. I didn't say that to him. I'm just thinking, it's an easy run. Let's just get down to the bottom of the hill, and we'll deal with it then. And uh, and so then, uh, so then we start going down, down the hill, and he's really having a hard time going, going down the hill. And I mean, he's snow plowing, and he's bent over, and he, you know, he looks like he's in a lot of pain, and. Uh, and he, you know, he's just bent over with his, and he's snow plowing, and and so we get down, and I'm talking to Terry, and I'm like, "Are you okay?" You know, and 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 he's saying nothing, and so we go around this bend, and then I'm like, "Terry, let's stop." And so so he ends up pulling over, to to the right side, and then I came came uh, next to him, and I was I was like, "Terry," um, I didn't say Terry, I, I said. Do you know your name? And he and he goes, Terry. And I'm like, this isn't good. How, how, how long does it take you to get the name out? I'd probably say four or five seconds. Okay. And so and so then, I said, Do you know where you are? And he just shook his head and just like, no. And so then, at that at that point, we were on the right side of the run. Uh, as a uh, Deer Valley employee, uh, the, the same color, red, red or, or green um, coat, was on the other side. And so I waved, waved my ski pole, and the guy came over, and and I told him, I said, I asked him, do you have a cell phone? And I, I said, because he, because this he's got a head injury. Does and, that work? Yes. Why? He just was was out of it, and he just didn't know his name, didn't know where he was at. He, he didn't know he was at Deer Valley. No. Okay. Continue. And so, so then he he um, gets on 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 the phone or radio or whatever he had, and then he calls the ski patrol, and then the ski patrol comes down. The ski patrol came pretty quick. They were there within probably a couple minutes. So, so describe um, how they arrived and who was there and what they looked like. Uh, the, 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 it was just a ski, just one ski patrol came down, and it was it was a, a, a female, and she brought a, a toboggan down. Toboggan. Yes. Okay. Now, I assume most people know what that is, but just in case, describe it. What's a toboggan? A, a toboggan. <laughs> it's like a sled, and they, they, they it's it's just. A sled that they pe- that the people can get in, and then they have ha- handles where where somebody can that's hurt can lay in, in it, and then and then the ski patrol can take them down to the bottom. Okay. Do you know if that person's name was Whitney Smith? Do you know that one way or the other? I, I heard that later. Later. Okay. Yes. Whitney Smith. Okay. Now describe Terry's emotional state at this point when she shows up and talks to him for a few minutes. What, what well, did he look like? What did he appear to be like? Well, he he looked like he was in a, in a daze, and he looked fearful. And then when this when the ski or when the ski patrol came, it really made him it really frightened him. And uh, and I think I think because he didn't know what was going on, and then all of a sudden the, the ski patrol comes down with the toboggan, and and uh, he he's just he's just frightened. Your Honor, there's. There's several speculation comments there where Terry's going to testify himself. I'm he's, not what he, what, he's, he's, he's right. Yeah, just a second. Um, as to relevance or first-hand knowledge, it's overruled. Go ahead. No, yeah. you know, describe Terry. Do you look like a child, like an adult, or what? What do you, what do you look like? Yeah, and so, so he, he just looked frightened. So this, uh, the ski patrol came up, and so it's so the three of us. It was, it was me, Terry, and the ski patrol. And the the um, ski patrol is trying to talk to Terry, and I'm trying to talk to the ski patrol, and Terry's looking at me like a like a like a small ch- child that's just just frightened, and, and he's looking at me like like help me, help me, and uh, and I just at that point the the the, 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 the ski patrol knew he had a head injury, and so I I just I just figured you know what I just got to get get away from here. And so, so at that point, I ended up going up the the next to the 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 Deer Valley employee because the Deer Valley employee was waving people off because we came around this bend, 
And this, so I went up, and, and it was right next to next to, to the employee. And so we were, there was two of us that were kind of blocking skiers from coming around. And then, and then, so 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 she so she gets Terry in the toboggan, and uh, and then takes takes Terry down. Okay, now um, uh, skip ahead. They, he t- did you ski behind them, or what did you do? Well, um, after the ski patrol came, I ended up calling calling Kurt, and he's the the guy who was in charge of this meetup group. And I told them what had happened, and so because they were they were down already, and so they got and went and jumped and, and got on the ski lift and went up, and so so they when when they, they uh, when the, the when the ski patrol went, went down and then the mountain host he thanked me he says you know thanks, and then he went down and and, and I saw um, Terry's friend come flying by me. And uh, and so I knew that I knew that Joanne would be right behind because Joanne's not that fast of a skier, and so I just oh, waited. Joanne Mattis, M A T T E S. Yes, Joanne Mattis. And so I waited for her, and, uh, and then she came down, and I explained to her what had happened, and then after that we slowly skied down to the to the bottom of the hill. Uh, did you end up at the first aid station? Yes. Okay, tell the jury what happened at the first aid station at uh, the Empire Lodge at Deer Valley that day. Yeah, and so we, so we ended up getting, going down there, and, uh, and everybody was down there. And Terry was talking to, to a nurse, I believe it was a nurse, and when we, so we, we uh, um, so we, Joanna and I just kind of stood there. And then, and then uh, Kurt, he wanted me to go, go up the hill with him and go skiing, and I just didn't really want to go. And so then, so then uh, um, t- about a half an hour, 20 to 30 minutes went by, and there was really nothing I can do. And, uh, you know, the, Terry was talking to the nurse and, and whatnot, and so I actually ended up going up and did a couple runs with Kurt and the other guy that was in the group. And then I came back down to check on Terry, and uh, then, then Kurt, or Kurt and the other guy ended up going back up and going skiing. Uh, I'm sure you didn't want to get in the way. Um, tell the jury your observations of Terry's condition before and you left. He was, he still wasn't coherent. He, uh, and uh, he was, when I, when, I, when I left, he was pretty much still just talking to the, they were just, Checking Terry out and evaluating him. Yeah, did you hear the word concussion mentioned? Um, later on, the the nurse um, told me they thought that I was going to be taking. Okay. Uh, what was, uh, in your opinion, Terry? What was he making any pain complaints? And if so, describe those to the jury. Yes, he was. Uh, yeah, he was still complaining about his ribs. Okay. Multiple times. Oh, yeah, he, he, yeah, he was from basically from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. Was he fully coherent? No. Okay. What were the plans made to get Terry home? Well, they, uh, his, the, the, the lady that he was skiing with, she was going to go down to get the vehicle. And, uh, and to get to the vehicle, it's on the other side of the resort, and it takes a little, uh, a little while to get there because you have to go, th- go up a couple lifts. And so, so, they, uh, so, sh- so she was gone for quite a while. And then, and then the nurse, she thought, she thought that I was actually probably going to go and, and, and um, take, take Terry down. And, and the nurse actually told me, she says, if he starts throwing up, um, Take him directly to the to the ER because he's got a concussion. Okay, now uh, you then uh, let Terry's friend take him home, right? Well, I, I I think I believe later that that Terry's Terry's friend. Um, I believe. Well, Terry Terry said that everything was okay, and that he had everything taken care of. Okay, and so then as far as getting home. Yes, and so, uh, so, yes. Sustained? Okay, 
What was the context of OK? Um, oh, oh. What was the context where he said everything's OK? Yeah, yeah. He, he said, because we were talking about taking him down. Yeah. And, um, and then they, and they, they said that everything was handled. And so he was, okay. he didn't need, he, they didn't need me to take him down. Now, let me just skip ahead. Um, after February 26, 2016, okay, uh, when's the next time you actually saw Terry face to face? That summer, um, it was probably six months later, I'm mm-hmm. guess, guessing June, July. Uh, we went down to the to the cotton bottom. And is that like a, a club, a beer joint? What is that? Yeah, it's 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 just a it's a, a uh, just a beer a beer place, and they're they're known for their garlic burgers. Garlic burgers. Yes. Okay. Heavy on the garlic or light on the garlic? Pardon me. Heavy on the garlic or light on the garlic? <laughs> um, vampires won't get around you if you. Okay. <laughs> Keep the vampires away. All right. Uh, and so. Uh, how how long were we there with him? Oh, I, probably maybe an hour or two. Okay, uh, and did you have another t- a chance to have a have a lunch with him, a garlic burger with him? Yes. Okay, and when was that? That was uh, that was probably a couple weeks later because Joanne really likes Terry, and we used to go down to the Cotton Bottom and get garlic burgers. And when she found out that I was went down there with him, she. Had her, her feelings were kind of hurt, and so <laughs> we ended up going down. So the three of us went down. Okay. Uh, Do you know Terry well enough to tell the jury uh, what changes might have occurred in Terry after that accident? I don't know him well enough. Okay. You didn't know him well enough before, right? No. In, in these in these meetup groups, you'll have a, a bunch of people that are that are just there and so they're there to ski and they do chat you know like going up the lift and stuff like that but but I, I only, I've only I, I've only met Terry once one on one the other all the other times were in, in the ski meetup group okay hold on one second When you were at the hill that day, before the impact, uh, were you in any kind of a, 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 a trough or a dip on the hill where you couldn't see the impact? No. Okay. Uh, now, <coughs> that report that we saw here on the screen a few minutes ago, that wasn't filled out by you, was it? No. It was filled out by... Eric Christensen? Um, I, I, I guess, right. yes. Okay, no further questions, thank you. Mr. Owens? Uh, I'll be a while. Do, do we want a break or do we want to keep a short restroom break? break? Take about five, ten minutes. Thank you,
Goody for the jury. No. No. We do that. It's, it's this shoulder season between winter and summer that's the most difficult to manage in this building. Thank you. Thank Will do. We're ready for the jury. Thank you. All right, Mr. Owens, you may proceed. But before we do that, uh, just for the record, Defense Exhibit 102 is received. And you were going to mention coach. Oh, thank you, Mr. Sykes. Uh, due to the temperature in here, the lawyers have asked for permission, and I've granted it so that they don't have to wear their jackets. So if, if it, things look a little informal or we're loosening our our top button, that's why. Thank you. The jury can, absolutely. If you need to take the jet, uh, you know, take off a jacket or loosen a, a collar, looks like you look fairly comfortable already, but if you need to, please feel free. Uh, Mr. Ramon, Steve Owens, we've met before, correct? Yes. In fact, uh, I took a long deposition of you and a long statement several years ago. True? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yes. It encompassed about 300 pages of transcript. Do you recall that? Uh, yes. Did you once in that deposition say that Eric Christensen told you that Gwyneth took Terry out? No. Did did you did you say that today? Uh, no. What I what I meant to say, I, I I get dyslexic when I get nervous. No, he he said that your buddy just took out Gwyneth. All right. I was a little confused by some of the questioning. Okay. Okay. So Christensen always said your buddy took out Gwyneth Paltrow, right? Yes. All right. Did you correct him? No. Wouldn't that be the perfect time to say, you are incorrect, sir? Uh, I, I wasn't. He, he was yelling, and I, I didn't, didn't want to get into an argument with him. I didn't you want were, to even. You, you had. Did you finish? Yeah, I didn't want to have a conversation with him. So there's the, the Deer Valley representative, true? Yes. And he's told you what he 
believes happened. True? Yes. And you didn't say a word? No. But seven years later, you're saying it now, right? Saying what? That Gwyneth took out your buddy, not the other way around. No, no, but he, he no, he didn't. Uh, no, Gwyneth, Gwyneth, uh, uh, Terry, what, what Eric said was your buddy took out Gwyneth. That's what he said. I, I never said that, that, uh, the, the, the Terry took out Gwyneth. But you chose not to correct him? No. Okay, and now let's, let's turn to uh, Defense 87, uh, move to admit. Any objection? What, what is it? Yes. I did give you this binder yesterday, but it's the picture. The one on the right? Yeah, left. Left. Okay. No objection. Uh, defense Exhibit 87 is received. And Peter, are you keeping notes so we can make sure where everything is admitted? Thank you. Oh, you know what? I didn't address this yet. James, do you mind if I do that? Oh, I messed you up. I forgot to address that. Did, did you record for Terry a little video of you explaining to Terry what had happened. Yeah, Lawrence. Same day. I'm talking the same. same day. The same day as, as which day? Same day as the collision. No, there was no video. Did you uh, see that Terry, I should keep saying Mr. Sanderson, so I mean no disrespect. Mr. Sanderson. Mr. Sanderson recorded something from his friend and eyewitness and sent it to his daughters. This is Defense 102. Uh, do you know what he's talking about there? I have no idea. You were his friend that was there and claim to be an eyewitness, true? Yes. You're the only one. Yes, I don't know, I, I believe so. There wasn't another, I, I should say, you were the only friend there in terms of prior knowledge of Terry Sanderson, true? A prior knowledge. At the collision site. I mean, Gwyneth didn't know him, Christensen didn't know him, no. Moses didn't know him, right? Yes, I was, I was the only one that knew him. So something Terry Sanderson sent to his daughters said, I'm famous. And just so you know, I, uh, we do have an expert, a, a defense finder for the witness, and maybe you could track that down. This is uh, kind of, can you crank your neck and see what I'm talking about here? Are you able to read it from there? Okay. In Honor, uh, I object to the question. So I say there's no foundation for no. him to comment on what Terry said or didn't say or sent or didn't say. There's no foundation. Yeah. I overruled. I'd like to hear the question. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? You may. So 102, this is so you don't have to crank your neck. Do you know uh, whether Terry Sanderson sent to his daughters something from you? Objection no. Foundation. Overruled? Do you know, sir? Can you repeat that one more time? Yes, I'm, it's, I'm seeing if you know anything about this document. No, so, I don't know anything about any videos. Here's what happened from my friend and eyewitness, and then something. You don't know what that is? No, I have no idea. And let's go to the top of one, Defense 102. Now, his, his daughter 
responds something to the effect of, I can't believe this is all on GoPro. Uh, do you know what that's referencing? I have no idea. You've never seen a GoPro, have you? I know what a GoPro is. Oh, I'm sorry. Of this exact case. Of this N collision. No. All right. Let's now go to Defense 87, which is the photograph. Which has been received. So in that binder, Mr. Ramon, if you go, do you see the little stickers? There's one called D87, unless you can personally see this yourself. <coughs> May I assist you? You may. By these stickers. And you go up a little. Okay. Uh, is this you? Yes, it is. And who's that? That's Joanne. And that's at the first aid station at the bottom of the hill? Um, I, 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 I'm guessing, I'm not sure. All right, I think it was Terry that produced this, so we can ask him. Uh, does that look like you skiing that day? Yes. All right, if Mr. Uh, Sanderson himself says, I took this picture, do you dispute it? No, I, I, I kind of remember that, that photo. You were all smiles there, it looks like, true? Yeah, but I don't, uh, I don't know when that photo was taken. And. Uh, so I'm assuming I'm going to represent to you, and it's an admitted exhibit that I was at the first aid station. Um, so let me, well, it's a stipulated exhibit, is it not? Yes, it's admitted, but not where it is. Well, we'll, we'll wait till Mr. Christensen, uh, excuse me, Mr. Sanderson testifies then. Okay. Do you dispute that this was taken at the bottom of the first aid station? I don't know where it was taken. Was she one of your skier friends that day? Yes. And and uh, I I take it you felt comfortable enough leaving Terry that you could com go complete your ski day, right? You went. No, when we when we left him, did we did you do went, more runs. We went we went back to the truck, but uh, jo Joanne actually did not want to did not want to ski after that. And uh, so we just we just went back to the truck. We actually had to go up the up up a couple of lifts to get back to the truck because we were we were on the other side. I see. Okay, let's start way back for a minute. Um, do you remember some questions about someone gave us the idea that Miss Paltrow, from the time of the collision until the time that she left, was about eight minutes. Do you remember that question on direct? No, she was uh, she was only there for about three or four minutes. Okay, that's your testimony is that she was only there three or four minutes. Yes. And that's from collision to so whenever you're ready, collision to uh, and if you could highlight it and yeah, make it bigger. Your Honor. Do you remember in your deposition, it was you who said eight to ten minutes? It was eight. eight. You know, I object to showing the deposition to the jury. They can read from it, but it's, it's not an exhibit. It can't be shown to the jury. Uh, all I'm doing is asking the question. Well, right. but still, Sus it's Sustained. So you were the one that said she was there from collision to leaving for eight to ten minutes. Yes or t false? True or false? Well, Your Honor, uh, I, I don't want an objection, Your Honor. Right. That, that, you don't get to decide if he objects. That's okay? true. That is right. true. I'll so, Mr. Quiet. Sykes, let, let's just hear what the witness's answer is. I think it's I, a proper I don't question. Want to upset Judge Owens, but, but I, I don't think you should be interrupting the witness and dictating what he says. Here is. Well, it, let me let me just instruct you. Uh, on, in a this is a cross examination. It's not like a normal conversation between two people. And the, the questioner is entitled to ask questions that call for a yes or no response. 
If you can't answer it with a yes or a no, just indicate that. Just say, I really can't answer that oh, with I'm a sorry. yes or no. I thought you were talking. No. Oh, did, sorry. did you hear everything I just said? No, I thought you were okay. talking to him. I'm Fine. sorry. Can so this is cross-examination. This is not a normal conversation. Okay. And the questioner is entitled to ask you questions that require you to answer with a yes or no. Or if you can't answer it with a yes or no, just tell him. I really can't answer that with a yes or no. And then he'll ask a different question. Okay. And if there's more to be asked on that topic, the other side will have an opportunity to follow up later with you. Okay. Have you previously testified under oath years ago that the time that elapsed from collision to Ms. Paltrow leaving the scene was eight to 10 minutes? True uh, or false? I can't answer that. Do you need to be reminded? We could pull up your deposition transcript. Uh, if you, if the answer is uh, you need to be reminded, I'm happy to do that. Would you like me to do that? Yes. Okay. James, please pull that up. Well, Not you're on, the screen. Not on the screen. Yeah, you, you can show him a copy of his deposition and have him look at it. Uh, so this is the physical copy of the transcript. <coughs> Which I assumed he would have his transcript with him. You don't, I take it? No. What, what page are you reading? And do you have a physical copy I can hand to you? Thanks. But what, what page are you reading? James, what page is that? Uh, 139. Judge, we need to approach on this. Sure. Uh, him the, the uh, Fine. yeah sure on your trial pad page and line reference Right, right now we're in direct. We're in the, the cross examination, so you can go ahead and show the witness. said in there with regard to this issue so we're not taking up everyone's valuable time there was a lot in that deposition that question 
could you go ahead and read your transcript and um, if I believe if you if you scroll down it uh, why don't you ask him why don't you specify the line number council and have him read it page 139 line 24 to 25 are you with me no you're gonna have to walk him through it James. I'm not sure how you how you scroll this it's down. Just right on that page. Yes, but I believe that uh, I believe that what you're talking about was taken out of out of context. Let's read the question. Read. Can I read the question on yeah, page one thirty nine, yes. line twenty four? Are you there? Yes. From the Let's, time Gwyneth yeah. stood up to the time she skied away, how much time? was there from and your answer go ahead and read it <laughs> sorry I yeah and so it uh I'm going to read the okay. question again. From the time Gwyneth stood up to the time she skied away, about how much time went by there? Read your answer on lines 2 3 and 4. Yeah, so it says here from the time she stood up until the, and then that's blocked out, and then it says, I don't know. Something was blocked out, and then, and then it was cut off, and it says, I keep, don't know. Keep going. Just it's, start reading the It says time. maybe 10 minutes or, and, and then that's blocked off, and so it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, it, line yeah. six. Is it eight to ten minutes? And what your an what was your answer on line eight? It, uh, Are you reading this? Can, yes, I am. What does line eight say? The three words there. I don't. Okay, let's, it says about eight minutes. Thank you. Your Honor, do we have to do the correction too? Your Honor. That can take place on redirect. Which has already been ruled on. Okay. Let's start from scratch here. Terry was your Facebook buddy, true? He was on Facebook. And you were friends with him? Acquaintance. So on Facebook, friends means friends. You're a friend of his on Facebook, or do we have to There's pull that There's people that have a thousand different friends on Facebook. I, I I don't even. Do we have to pull it up? We've got it. Well, you can pull it up if you like. I don't. I don't even go on Facebook. So the way this works is, I ask a question. Okay. And if you say yes, we go on. And if you say no, then we pull it up. Okay. Yes. Yes. He's. We're on, we're on Facebook. Your friends on Facebook. Yes. You're colorblind, true? Somewhat, yes. Well, in yes. your deposition, yes. you didn't yes. say yes. somewhat. Yes, sorry. So one rule of the court is we can't talk over each other. So I'll, I'll complete my full question, then you complete your full answer. You're colorblind. Yes. And you don't know the color, the outfit, for instance, Ms. Paltrow was wearing that day, true? True. And you don't know the color that Terry was wearing that day, true? True. And when they collided, it looked like one person going down. Is that true? Yes. You were on the other end of this courtroom about that far, true? Yes. But you were, you're not just focused on Terry, true? I was focused on Terry. Well, now could you please repeat that? Sure. You weren't just focused on Terry, right? That's not. Uh, no, that's false. You were just focused on Terry. I was, I was focused on. I was fo yeah, I, Yes, I was focused on Terry. Only on Terry, at the top of the hill. I'm just going to watch Terry. Is that your? No, I, I no. Okay, you're focused on other things too. Yes. All right.
you have not been in the workforce for 10 years, true? True. You spent about half your year scuba diving and about half skiing. True? Both. What did you say? Traveling and scuba diving, half. Yes. Skiing, half. False. Okay, but th that is, that's how you spend your time, those, t those activities. True. And uh, Terry, mm, strike that, Mr. Sanderson, he, he traveled internationally quite a bit too, didn't he? Uh, well, I, I can't answer that. Do you know how many international trips he went on after the ski collision? I can't answer that. Do you know of any? No. During these six or so days that you had skied with uh, Mr. Sanderson before, uh, that usually involves, for instance, having lunch together. Is that fair? No. Frequently? Mm, yes. Yes. So that's time one-on-one, -on -one, having a burger or something at, in the mid-lodge, mid right? That's false. Okay, tell me how it's false. What's it's we're, we're 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 in a group of people. All right. And then sometimes after skiing, you guys would go get some drinks and talk. Fair. I can't answer that. After skiing. Would you guys go get drinks together or eat together during those six visits? Did you ever do that? Yes. And one of those times was just one-on-one -on -one with the two of you, true? False. And one of those was just one-on-one -on -one with you. And your answer? Skiing? Balls. Okay. How about uh, after? After after the collision? Did you do that one-on-one -on -one sometimes? No. Oh, yes. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. After the collision. And you did not observe anything unusual about him emotionally, physically? True? False. Oh. Okay, so we'll pull that up here in just a minute. You knew that Terry had a bad eye. I'm using quotes around that because that's, I'd say, Mr. Sanderson. True. You knew he was 70 years old. True? Uh, false. You didn't know exactly, but you knew he was about 70 years old. True. When you were skiing down that day, you heard a noise. True. You didn't know if it was a male or female voice. True? True. And you turned to look. True? True. One of the things you were doing while skiing, hopefully, is trying to take care of yourself to make sure you don't actually crash into someone. Is that fair? True. This is in, let's say, the one minute before the ski collision. Your, your focus primarily, I assume, on enjoying your day. True. And is it true there was moderate ski traffic that day? True. There was a picture of the bandana run you're familiar with it true or I guess at the time I deposed you you didn't know the name of it is that fair true you were are you you were a snowbird guy really really true and you bragged like I had 150 days skiing right the year before 
protection for the person who were bragging. Did you tell me like you had skied 150 days previously uh, True. in one year? True. Now, when you heard a noise, that's what drew your attention to Terry. True. Terry was wearing a helmet. True. True. The person he collided with was not wearing a helmet. Is that true? That's your memory? I, I don't know. Did you tell me she was not wearing a helmet? I'm not sure. I'm not, I don't remember what she was wearing. Do you remember previously testifying that you knew she was not wearing a helmet? I'm not sure what she was wearing. If you look through the deposition... Sir, position, listen to my question. I'm sorry. Did you previously tell me under oath that she was not wearing a helmet? I can't answer that. And why can't you? Because it was... Because... Why can't you tell me that whether you previously told me that? That she was not wearing a helmet? Yeah. I, I wasn't really paying attention to what, what she was wearing. She was not wearing a helmet. I mean, did you tell me that previously? I, I, don't, thi I don't think so. Oh, boy. I'm going to make a note of these things. Well, let's go to page 63. Uh, James, I think we're going to have to do that. All right, have you looked at the bottom of page 63? Sorry if I said 53, 63. Is it 53-2? No, I'm just asking you. Bottom of 63. Have you read that, sir, the last four lines? Yeah, it says above, it says, I think she was so, wearing a hat, so but the, a helmet didn't, so that's 64. didn't stand out. James, can you just stay exactly right with him and stay with him? Bottom of 63, last four lines. Just read those to yourself, please. It's, it says... Um, no, just read it, it just, to yourself. Yeah, the, there it says, and when I questioned you about a year and a half ago, you said uh, she was not wearing a helmet. Do you remember that? Yes. And your answer was yes? Yes. Okay. Let's keep going. Thank you. And she was not wearing goggles either. True? I can't answer that. Sir, have you, did you read your deposition before this? Yes. Like how many days ago? Yes. I, I didn't know what she was. I couldn't remember what she was wearing. Can you 
stay right with him on page 64 at the top. Can you read page 64 at the top? And she was not wearing goggles. No. Okay, I'm going to read the question and yes, you read yes. the answer. So let's just start at the top here. Mm, okay. 64. So is your best memory she was not wearing a helmet? What was your answer? Yes. And she was not wearing goggles. And you wrote, you said? Yes. No, it doesn't say that. Says, oh. Uh, Line five. And, and she was not wearing question. goggles. And she was not wearing goggles, no. And I said, is that right? And you yeah. said? Yes. And she was not wearing any facial covering? No. Is that your testimony? That she had no goggles, no helmet, and no face, nothing covering her face at the time of the collision? Is that your testimony uh, today? Uh, I can't answer that. All right. You've previously test so testified under oath, true? Uh, yes. Okay. I think we're done for a minute. Thank you. Okay, groomed run. It was a groomed run, right? Yes. Not hard and icy. Uh, it was. It was very firm. Okay. So I should specify, like, so hills can be hard or they can be icy. Which was it? Um, I icy. When it's icy, you can go down the hill with ice skates, and uh, this this was very very firm. So, and so good conditions, right? Yes. Do you recall that the, from the time you heard a scream, you can't tell male or female, you looked and in a split second, then is when uh, you then were upon the collision site, true? Your eyes? Yes, it was about one or two seconds. So in the deposition, you said split second. Do you recall those terms? No. Split second. Do we have to look it up or are you gonna deny it? Uh, it, it uh, a, a, a second I'd or like two. I'd make an objection here. This is an improper use of the deposition. He's supposed to ask the question get the answer, uh, and then show him the deposition to see if that refreshes his recollection. So the objection is improper impeachment. This is exactly what I learned in law school, Your Honor. You ask the question, you make sure you have to look it up, and then you look it up. Go ahead. Today I hear you saying one to two seconds between the scream and the collision. Yes. But in your deposition, you told me split second. Do you agree or disagree? Uh, I, I could have. Objection. That's a, a proper judge. Agree or disagree? O over, overruled? Um, I, I, I would agree. Okay, thank you. Now, is this your testimony? She plowed into him. And he went spread eagle, head down. True? Yes. Hands out, skis out. Yes. He skis stayed on? Yes. And she went right over him, spread eagle, head down. No, she was on his back. And then. Her head's down to, downhill. Uh, yes. True? Yes. And then she slid on top of him. <coughs> That's your testimony. Yeah. yeah. And it, when they, is that true? Yes. And then when they came to arrest, uh, she was below him on the hill. Yes. If he was spread eagle, head down toward the bottom of the hill and his skis crossed, were skis crossed or were they out? No, they were out. They were okay. not crossed. Did you ever go and help him, like, take his skis off? No.
in the, let's say, the five seconds before the collision, you didn't watch where Gwyneth came from, true? True. And you didn't watch where Terry came from. True. You weren't looking at Terry until the noise and collision. True. Now Terry's a good skier, you said, and he skis parallel. True. And he, uh, the collision occurred to the far right if you're going downhill for the skier's right. True? True. And there's a bit of a, not a cliff, but kind of a sharp descent right there. True? True. Gwyneth was skiing with an adult male. Do you remember? Yes. And you thought it might be the Coldplay guy. Was that your? I didn't know who it was. Did you tell me in your deposition you thought it was the Coldplay, Coldplay uh, guy? Uh, Joanne, she's into that stuff, and she did, said. Did you tell me at your deposition that it was the Coldplay guy? I said it might have been. And uh, her son, you saw that her son came over? True. I heard you say that the, you felt the Deer Valley instructor was unprofessional. Did I hear you sort of say that? Yes. Uh, and did you ever report that to Deer Valley? No. Did you ever fill out any statement? Uh, like, hey, I wanted you to know what I saw? No. Now, do you agree your eyesight is not as good as it was when you were 18? Uh, true. Gwyneth got on her feet. You, saw, you, you observed that personally? True. And by then, she was like about 10 feet away from the collision site? True. And let's pull up, James, if you don't mind. Exhibit four of uh, Ramon's deposition. And I don't know what number we've marked it, but I'm gonna keep going until you're ready, so let me know. All right, we, we had you write during your deposition sort of X's. Do you recall this? Yes. X is where things are, and uh, this is it. If you look to your left there, and if you want to come down, uh, and uh, I'm sure it's not an exhibit because I've only admitted like three. What? Why don't we take it down until we can resolve? Is it going to be admitted? Is it demonstrative? What is it? So I was going to establish the foundation for him and probably move to admit it. Is it as, well, why don't you approach? It, yes.
Is there a stipulation on this exhibit that it can may be admitted? Yes. So, okay. A, Defense Exhibit 89A is received. All right, 89A. Did you draw this picture? I think you can just use the big microphone there. But you can bring the exhibit to you if you want. I don't want you to hurt your back. Um, OK. So can I point out a few things? Uh, G stands for Gwyneth. Is that true? Yes. And then the X below that is Terry. You wrote Terry? That's that's actually above. If you look, if you look right oh, here, it says top. You're absolutely right. That you're right. Thank you. Let's orient us. So at the top, you wrote bottom. This is going to be very confusing for the transcript. But B O T that means bottom, right? Yes. And at the bottom, it says top. This is going to screw everyone up. True. Well, it's the top of the hill and the bottom of the hill. Thank you so much. So, uh, and this represents where they came to a stop. Is that fair? Yes. And the right side, it says drop off, right? That's the? Yeah. Yes. And that's your own handwriting? Yes. And, uh, okay, so then you put two X's with Craig, and what does it say? Does that say four zero right next to you? Craig four zero? What is that? Oh. Uh, the, yeah, four zero. Yes. That's forty the, the, feet away, right? Yeah, from the time from the time of the collision. Earlier, I heard you say something like thirty-five feet, but you wrote forty feet when we previously talked, right? right? Yes. And then that's where you came to a stop initially, and then it says, "Craig," and what's that word right there? Is Craig after? Is that what you're looking at? Craig after. So you you slid down at some point. Is that fair? Slid down. The, the, where it says 40, that's where I saw the collision, and then I skied down to where to after the collision. Right. So what's the before versus after again? Why are there two Craig X's? Because that's, that's where I, I saw the collision, and then after that, where it says Craig after, after, after that, I skied down. All right. You stand by your diagram. Well, I, I ended up. Uh, Are you changing yes, it? Yes, yes, I do. Okay. Now, have you pre previously met with the lawyers for Terry Sanderson? Uh, the previous lawyer? Or, or, yes, I, I've met with them. Did you meet with his previous lawyer too? No. Okay, I didn't. I may have misunderstood you, so you can forget my question. Uh, you recognize these are not your lawyers, right? They're Terry's lawyers. True. Okay, but they p prepared you for your deposition. They just told me just to go in and just say the, the, the truth, just tell your story. Okay, but you met with them previously. Yeah, uh, without met with them. without me. I met with them. Since the accident, you've had several co uh, casual conversations with Terry, is that right? True. He's, he's someone more than just someone you skied with. Uh, that's, I, I actually I went to, once, once I met him at the Cotton Bottom, and uh, the, twice I met him at the Cotton Bottom, and then I skied with him two times after that. And, Ever since that, I haven't uh, I haven't seen him. Did you once say 
that you could talk, uh, Terry could talk to a wall for three or four hours and have a good communication, good conversation. Yeah, so I was saying he has the gift for gab. And that includes prior to the ski accident. That that was yes. No, I, I don't know about after, but um, prior to the ski accident, he's a he 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 likes to talk. All right. Is it true that someone at least asked Terry if he was all right after the collision? That's true. And he nodded yes. Yes or no? He, he just, he nodded a little bit, but he did uh, just nodded. He nodded yes. He shook his head a little bit. Sir, do we have to go to the transcript? If you would like. No, I don't want. He nodded a little bit. He nodded yes. Is the answer yes? It, he, he never said yes. Okay. James, could you go show Mr. Ramon page 107? He nodded yes. Answer yes. Do you deny that? Page Steve. 107, line 12. Your Honor, can we have them uh, read the next uh, 10 or 15 verses to get the context? Your Honor, that's you can do that during your redirect. Okay, so here's 107. All right, I'm going to right read now? the line. Why don't you read it? Line 12 and 13, and your answer on line 14. Well, it says he nodded yes and... Question mark. And, uh, and your answer? And, and I, I, said, I said he nodded. Your answer, sir, on line 14 of 107. Don't, don't mm -hmm. commentary it. Just give it to me. It says yes. All right. That's all on that. Terry was complaining of rib pain after the collision, true? True. He was not complaining of any other kind of pain. True? A true. For instance, head pain. He wasn't saying my head hurts. He was saying my ribs hurt. True. Thank you. When you met with Terry these times after the collision, I personally could not tell anything different with Terry. Is that true? True. One of your interactions with Terry was to, to go to an elk farm and you, you point to an elk and they shoot it for you and give you the meat? Is that true? Could you repeat that? You bet I can. Okay. One of your activities with Terry was to go to an elk farm where you point to an elk and they shoot it right there in front of you mm -hmm. and then uh, you buy the meat. False. Oh, am I making this up that you did this with Terry? Yes. Oh, well I didn't make it up from somewhere. What did you tell me about elk meat with Terry? 
Well, what I told you was I knew he had some, some kids because they like elk meat. And Terry went to an elk farm to uh, to get a get a, an elk, and but he he didn't he didn't shoot it. They they shot it for him. Okay. And then he ended up giving the meat to his to his kids. And have you done that too? No. Have, have you gotten an elk before? Yes. Okay. I think I think I thought those two things were the same thing, but you're saying that was independent. Yes. Thank you. Excuse me while I try to wind up here. Is this true that uh, Gwyneth, where she initially stopped after the collision, she looked upset? No, she just had a blank look on her face. Okay, we'll find that in just one moment. At some point, she slid, the, she slid down a little further, like from 10 feet to then 20 feet. Is that right? A false. All right. Do you remember this in your deposition? So I don't want to go there if we don't have to. Didn't she move at some point without leaving the entire scene from her, lo from her spot where she uh, ended up after the collision. Could you repeat that, please? Yeah, I've, I'm questioning myself whether we even need to address this. But did she, did she ski down a little bit after she stopped in the collision? She skied down. She slid down a few feet. Okay. When Terry was going down the hill before the collision, he was going straight down with the skis parallel, true? Yes, he was doing small turns as he was going down. Terry was skiing straight down. Yes, basically straight. Yeah, when, when people... Is that your testimony? Yes, he was pretty much skiing straight down the hill. He wasn't going... Not pretty much. To, yeah, he was, Terry he was, he was, he was skiing he straight was skiing, sorry. down. I won't talk over you, sorry. Just tell me if this is the true statement. Terry was skiing straight down. Yes. Gwyneth looked shaken up to me. True? Yes. Even though she, according to you, had no helmet on, no goggles, and no mask or scarf, you did not recognize her. No. Is that correct? Yes. I take it you don't know what her son saw, Moses. I do not. Or what he heard. I do not. Now, after someone's uh, been hit, you understand the idea that when they go back up skiing, they might be a little uh, more tentative, more cautious, more concerned. True. Like just if I got in a car accident, maybe the next time I'm driving, I'm going to be extra, uh, maybe less confident. Is that fair? True. It sounds like under your story that you had to get in between the instructor because he was so berating Terry who was down on the ground. Is that true? True. If both Eric Christiansen and Gwyneth's boyfriend at the time, who was not the Coldplay guy, both say you didn't ski up until some time after the collision. Do you disagree with that? Yes. <clears throat> Do 
the eight to 10 minute statement, you did make a correction to your deposition sometime later, changing that to three to four minutes. Is that true? True. But when I was there present test deposing you with a court reporter, you told me eight to 10. Uh, I, I can't answer that. You, you made a change after the deposition was over. Is true. that true? And wh what caused you to make that change, like after it was all over? Because, because it, was taken, it was taken out of concept, context. If you actually look down to where I said that, a few, page, a few pages down it said that was wrong. It was three to four minutes. Within a 25-foot diameter of the scene, did you ever see any other instructor come by? No. So if Mr. Christiansen says, Ski Patrol actually came by and said, are things OK, you deny that? Uh, yes, I never saw a ski, a ski Patrol come by. Did you ever ask Mr. Christiansen, hey, I think we ought to get a toboggan here? No. In fact, Terry was standing at some point, true? True. And that was before the ski instructor left. Uh, true. Do you agree some things may have been said that you don't remember among the group? There was no... Yeah, yes or no, please. Uh, could you please repeat that? Sure. Do you, do you acknowledge you don't have a perfect memory and that some things may have been said that you don't remember? Mm, I, I pretty much remember. So uh, just say true or false. I have a perfect... False. I've got it. I've got to re-ask my question. I have a perfect memory. Go ahead. True. Right, I think that's enough there. <clears throat> True or false? O overruled. There, there could have been something that I. That True I'm, or false? I have a perfect memory. Ah, uh, false. Now I'll let you finish your statement. Go ahead. There may have been some things that were said that you don't recall. Ah, uh, true. Okay, we talked about how Mr. Sanderson was spread eagle head downhill and Gwyneth was spread eagle head downhill, true? False. Okay. Was she, it's a compound question, so I'm going to separate. Was Gwyneth uh, spread eagle down? Go ahead. Uh, no. Okay. And was her head downhill? Yes. Okay. And how were her skis? They were parallel. Okay. Head downhill. Was it straight down, like 90 degree angle, or was she at an uh, angle? Her head was straight down, and, uh, and her skis, skis were up above. To the right or to the left, or I, straight? I, I, I'm, I'm not sure whether her skis were pointed to the right or to the left, but she was, she was on her side. Okay. At some point, San, uh, Eric Christiansen said, or Christensen, apparently I've been pronouncing it wrong for several years, said, uh, your buddy took out Gwyneth Paltrow. True? True. And you, upon hearing that, actually backed up because you were going to go to get a closer look. Is that true? True. And when Gwyneth saw you doing that, she left. True. You were trying to talk to her, and she did, was not responding to you. True? True.
at some point in this step today, you've said, I wasn't thinking straight. I wasn't, I'm not thinking. Did you say that today? True. And you were talking about at the time of the collision. True. You understand Deer Valley is not on trial here today. True. The, the court dismissed Deer Valley. Did you understand that? Yes. Do you agree with this concept that there are risks in just going skiing? True. They're sort of inherent with the physical outdoor activity? True. Those are all of my questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Owens. Let's take a little bit longer recess for mid-afternoon. So we'll take a recess now. Thank you. Thank you. Um, would council approach, please?
so I don't see I don't see a problem. Yeah. Tanya in here? No. Okay. When you see her, uh... I'll let her know. Okay. Thanks. Be ready for the jury. Then they're on their way. Thank you. We are. I think they're on their way. I told them when I walked past. All right, thank you. Mr. Sykes, are you ready for redirect? I am, Josh. Let me just... I got just about four or five questions for you briefly. Uh, when you looked over at the, you know, you heard the scream, <coughs> looked over at the collision, can you tell the jury where Terry's arms were when he went down? Oh, they were by his side. Not, not flung out like this? No. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have you turn to page 63 in your deposition about the helmet and read some clarifying uh, information on that. I'm going to have Lawrence show you his, uh, on his, co his computer, okay? And we're going to page uh, 63, uh, line 18, okay? Now, I'm going to read the question, and then I'm going to read the answer and ask if I read it correctly, okay? Uh, 63, line 18. And was she wearing a helmet? Your answer, I think, I don't believe she was wearing a helmet. I think she was wearing a hat, but a helmet didn't stand out. Was that your answer? Correct. Okay. Deposition was taken on November 12, 2019. Correct? Oh, I'm sorry. Um. Uh. Yeah, 12, 12 of uh, 2019. 12 November, right. So no, three and a half years after the collision. Yes. All right. Now, um, 
By the way, do you remember how long, stay there, Lawrence, if you would. Do you remember how long you were deposed that day? <laughs> uh, seven and a half hours. Okay. Have you ever been deposed before? No. First time, right? Yes. What a joy, right? Yeah, yeah it was a long day. Okay. Uh, now, uh, Mr. Owens asked you uh, about nodding okay. I want you to turn to one, this is what he read, 107, 17 through 23. I'll read the whole thing. So, Your Honor, form of uh, impeachment, form of, I think he needs to answer a question, and then if there's a contrary answer, then we go to the transcript. Not Actually not. Uh, on, on redirect, but he has a right, right now. He's, re he's rehabilitating yeah. based on your impeachment, okay. so I'll permit it. Page 107, line 12, Mr. Owen's question was, he nodded yes, and your answer was yes. Question, Terry uh, nodded yes to the question, are you okay? Your answer, yeah, he was trying to get around, and uh, when he got up, he didn't really bring up an are you okay with him, because he wasn't okay. You could see that. I mean, uh, if it wouldn't have been for the mountain host pulling them up, Tabby, Terry never would have... Uh, uh, never wanted to even get up. Is that your full answer? True. Okay. And let's go to 109, 17 through 24. Okay. And uh, the question was, does that sound like your answer? He probably said he was okay. Your answer was, I don't know what context this is coming from. Terry wasn't talking. I mean, he wasn't. It was like we're having a conversation right now. He was mumbling. He didn't, he didn't come right out and say, yeah, I'm fine, I'm doing great. Is that your full answer? True. Okay, turn to 110, two through six. Okay, line two, do you agree that when asked, Terry said he was okay? Your answer was, he never said he was okay. Question, so no, that's a no, yes. And then turn to uh, 112, 2 through so, 12. Your, your Honor, there wasn't even a question. So can I just read portions of the transcript I like? Uh, this is improper. Your Honor, I'd like to rehabilitate the witness uh, and show the true context. I I've got two more of these, and then I'm done. I think you need to confirm. I mean, you, you didn't ask him a question on the last entry. Oh, OK. Well, I'll do that. Not, OK. Uh, uh, on page 112, do you see the question? Uh, by Mr. Owens, he was nodding yes. You see that? Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, um, yeah. One, one uh, no, I'm just asking if you see the if you see the question. Yes, uh, number two. Okay, yeah. And your answer was, yeah, he nodded, and then there was an interruption, and Mr. Owens said yes, uh, and your answer was nodded yes as he's laying there not speaking because he can't talk. Question, and the reason I say. Uh, that is, people can nod no, nodding doesn't help us. Answer, when he nodded yes, he was, he was uh, nodding with just like a small movement, you know. He wasn't, I mean, he couldn't even talk. Is that your full answer? True. One more. Uh, 114, 4 through 7. <coughs> okay. Uh, Mr. Owens, so are you disputing that you said yes? He said he was okay. Answer, yes. we got to back up because he just started. Did you dispute that you said it? We need to know what he's referencing. Question, Mr. Owens. Just, just a minute. There's an objection okay. that, it, that, that it's, all right, what's the objection that it's not a complete? So he needs to go back to know what we're talking about. Do you dispute that you said it? Well, look, you know. You can, you can recross him He quoted that, right? out of context. I'm quoting context. Just a minute. Okay. Question by Mr. Stephen Owens. So are you disputing that you said yes, he said he was okay? Answer, yes. That's your answer, isn't it? Yes. Okay. That's all I've got. Thank you very much. Mr. Owens. <clears throat> Mr. 
The term spread eagle, was that, you testified she, that Terry, after the collision, was spread eagle, did you not? When he was laying on the ground. All right, that's what we're talking about. Yes, when he was laying on the ground, he was, he was spread eagle. Do you agree that Terry was out cold for several minutes? Yes. Several is more than two minutes. Well, two minutes. Your Honor, this is the unspoken part. That's as much as I think I want to say, except we're trying to figure out where he was. Well, I'll allow a little bit of it overruled if you're going to the scope of redirect. He was asking about sort of his positioning. So that the entire time he was out cold, he was spread eagle on the mountain? Yes. And did, did you do anything for uh, him? No. The helmet thing. Address it again. Sorry for the delay. Do you remember? telling me that you thought it was odd she didn't have a helmet? Your Honor, uh, this is improper, uh, sir, because we've already discussed that in these answers, so. O overruled. Uh, True? You thought it was odd that like Gwyneth Paltrow doesn't have a helmet? I don't recall that. James, do you have a citation? I would have noticed a helmet. So no helmet, right? I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't recall that. What I just said, do you deny that? What I just read, I, I, do you I deny did. it? If, if, you look at, if you look at the deposition, I let her said I wasn't sure exactly what she had on her, what she was wearing. It could have been a hat. I would have noticed the helmet. So I no, what, what picture was I, I'm just going to, this is, uh, I, I want him to say it, and then I'll ask the question. I would have noticed the helmet, so no helmet, right? Yeah. Uh, can I stop getting interrupted while I'm doing this, Your Honor? When he refers to the deposition, he'll have to give you the page reference, but right now he's not referring to the deposition. Well, he may be reading from it, but he's not referring to it. This is a statement that he made uh, to me. Do you remember before your deposition you made a statement to me? I don't, I don't recall. Do you remember I came to your house with plaintiff's lawyers yeah, yes, and we did. put a little dictaphone right in front of you and said, can we interview you? Yes, you did. And did you testify truthfully in that interview? Yes, I did. And that interview was far before the deposition? Yes. Do you deny saying these words? I would have noticed the helmet. I don't, I don't recall that conversation. Do you deny saying that? I don't recall that conversation. Okay, let's go to it then, uh, James. So this is exhibit five of the deposition. It's the interview, it's page 31.
All right. Can you, sir, read the question and answer? Uh, and James, the page number is? 31. And then you want to start at line 15? Yes, please. please. Yeah, it says, uh, you, 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 it says, I, can you go to 12? No commentary, just read the words, please. Um, it, I says, I, I think she was wearing a hat, you know, because a, a helmet, I would have noticed the helmet. Okay, and the next three lines. So no helmet, right? Yeah. And then the that's next a, That's a lines. yes. I said, that's a yes, and your answer? Yes. All right, sir, did you tell the truth when I asked you that question five years ago? Uh, I, apparently, yes. Okay. We're moving on. Sorry. 34, I think he said. Do you remember? You're going to have to stay there, I, I'm afraid. <coughs> he said he was okay. Do you remember so testifying five years ago? He never said he was okay. That wasn't my question. My question was, did you answer my question five years ago that he was okay? He said he, he was okay. He never said he was okay. He could hardly, he could hardly stand up. Okay. He could hardly speak. So you deny it, ever saying that? No, I mean, he, he wanted to finish his answer before he was interrupted. Did you finish your answer? No, mm -hmm. but we... We, we, we so James. About, about two minutes before the, the ski patrol came and, and came down, he could, he could hardly, um, he had, had a hard time knowing what his name was. I mean, it took him four or five seconds to even know what his name was, and he had no idea where he was even at. Your Honor, my question and, was, do and, you deny saying it? This is the narrative. May I? So the, it, it, you, you're taking you're, this. You're taking on. this. Oh, hold on. There's no question. Oh, okay. So, so, Thank sorry. You. Sorry. All right, let's dig it out. He said he was okay. What, what line are you reading from, please? I'm waiting for the question. Did you say that? I don't, uh, I don't see it here. He probably said he was okay. Did you say that five years ago? Uh, if I did, I probably didn't understand your, your question. That wasn't my question. My question is, did you say that five years ago? Yeah, I think what you're doing is you think you're taking this stuff out of context. Because I never said he was okay. Terry said, yes, I'm okay. Did you say that? He never said he was okay. Did, did, have you told me that five years ago? Yeah, I think what you're doing is I think you're taking this stuff out of context. Yes, he said he was okay. Do we need to look it up? Yes. Okay, James, could you get over there? Yes. It's from the interview, page 68. Okay, can you just read line 10? Read it aloud, please. Yes, he, yes, he said he was okay. Yes, he said he was okay. All right, did you tell me the truth five years ago with plaintiff's counsel present? I think what, I, I don't think yes I understood no, your, sir. I don't think I understood your, understood your question because he was never okay. He could hardly stand. Sir, here, listen to my question. Okay. Did you tell, tell me the truth five years ago when you said uh, yes? He said he was okay. I yes think, or no? I think you're taking it's, this stuff out of context is what I think. Because he was never okay. So all I can do is point to a statement you gave to both of us 
with the transcription recorder present and saying I'm telling the truth. That is all I can say. So that's my only question. Was that your answer five years ago? O overruled? Can you answer Just it with say a yes, yes or no. Can you answer it with a yes or no question? Can, uh, can, you, can you repeat that? Yeah, it's the same question I'm asking like 10 times, but I'm trying to get a clear yes or no. Yes, he, meaning Eric, or excuse me, Mr. Sanderson, said he was okay. I'm not sure exactly what okay means. We're, we're, we're this. Yes or no, sir? I don't know when, I don't know exactly what we were talking about when he was okay. Well, we can go back and look. This is page 69. So I know what the mountain host is going to say. He's going to say, I asked him, and he said, Terry said, yes, I'm okay. Yes. And then he skied away, meaning the mountain host. And I'm wondering, are you saying that's true or not true? Yeah, he was. Yes or no? Yes. He said he was okay. Did I correctly read that? I, I didn't have the right. You said 69? Top of but 68. It, but it's 68. Got it. Back up. Your Honor, I, I apologize. So, tell us where you're starting. Which line? Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to spend any more time on this. Um, <coughs> thank you. Does that conclude your questions? Okay. No further questions. All right. You're you're welcome to step down. Is this witness under subpoena? And may he testify again in the case? He's not under subpoena. I don't. Okay. Yes, he is. He may testify again. Okay. In so you're still case. you're still under the exclusionary rule, meaning that you can't be in the courtroom other than when you testify. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You may call your next witness. Good afternoon, Ms. Davidson. If you could walk right up here to the clerk, she will, and then if you could raise your right hand, she will swear you in. Do you swear that the testimony you are about to give in the case now before the court will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you. Yeah, and then seat. walk right over here and have a seat. You can move uh, that binder out of your way. Thank you. And then we just want to make sure that you speak toward the microphone when you, when you speak. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Would you state your full name and tell the jury where you live? Yes. Teresa Carlene Davidson, St. George, Utah. Okay. And you go by Carlene, correct? I do. Right. Uh, tell the jury where you were born, uh, where you grew up, what your education is. Okay, I was born in Tachikawa, Japan. My father was a fighter pilot with the Air Force and I uh, moved all over the world during my first 18 years of life and uh, ended up in the Salt Lake Valley where I worked for KSL for a few years and then ended up at a dental lab as an accountant and I have two awesome daughters and seven beautiful granddaughters that I'm enjoying in St. George, Utah. And there's an interesting thing about you. You're, you graduated at least almost from Athens High School in Athens, Greece, correct? <laughs> yes. All right. <coughs> almost graduated, yes. I, that... I, I, I had to come back for my senior year. Not a, not a pleasant thing, senior year in California, but that was Talk all about right. about Athens, Greece, not Athens, Georgia, right? Right, exactly. Okay. No, I have a very rich life. I'm, I've been very blessed. And uh, tell the jury uh, about your about your training uh, from Sanford University or higher education. Where'd you go and when? 
uh, higher education, I went to Brigham Young University for one year, and uh, then after that kind of got my MRS, as they say, and ended okay. up married and raising children. All right, good. Uh, and with respect to, uh, excuse me, uh, let's see here. If you could uh, explain uh, to the jury how you met Terry Sanders. Okay. Uh, I was single for a few years and... So you, you had a divorce? Yes, You're yes. Single. Divorced okay. from the girl's father and then unfortunately uh, had another marriage and ended up single again okay. and got onto um, a match site and I happened to recognize a fellow that was in a picture that Terry was also in the picture, but I had an acquaintance there that knew him as well. So I contacted this acquaintance and asked him about this fellow and contacted Terry, and that's how we met. Okay. Um, and then about what year was that? 2014 sometime? 2014, yes, it would have okay. been 2014. And um, how long was your relationship with Terry and I prior, dated, prior to the ski accident. The ski accident, by the way, was February 26th of 2016. Correct, right. We, we dated for about, well, in a serious relationship for about 18 months prior to the accident. and then Describe Terry during that 18 months. Uh, <laughs> he was a gore. I had a lot of trouble keeping up with him. He's about five years older than I am, and he was definitely had a lot of energy, a lot of joyful. He, he was just a, a fun, loving wanted to uh, play and have a good time in life. He was very energetic, very ambitious. What are some of the activities you did during that time? Uh, a lot of hiking, uh, a lot of partying, to going to different events throughout the valley. Um, he, uh, gosh, we, we did some traveling the year of 2015. We, we went on a cruise, we went to Italy, we, uh, uh, also, later in the year of 2015, we went to, uh, the, let's see, that was to Belize and Key West. So we liked to travel quite a bit. But Did you mention dancing? Did you dancing dance? a lot, yes. Terry loved to dance. Okay. Hiking, you mentioned hiking, didn't you? A lot of hiking. How about swimming? Yes. Well, I, I wasn't the swimmer. He was. He has, okay. he has a pool in his home, uh, I know, one of those pools that have the equipment that moves the water and he's probably swam three times a week. Tell me, uh, <coughs> you mentioned uh, overseas trips. Uh, what are some of the places you went with him overseas? Uh, the Netherlands, we flew into Amsterdam, we went to and then did a cruise out of Italy and then came back and spent three weeks in Italy pretty much. Right. Okay, where else did you go? On the cruise we went No, home. no, no, there's other countries. Oh, other, uh, to, uh, later we went to um, uh, Belize and a lot of places in the U.S., just little stops. Did you go to Spain with him? Yes, yeah. Okay. That was on the cruise in when we were in Italy. Mm -hmm. How about uh, Far East, Japan, any of those places? No. Oh, okay. Uh, how would you describe his personality in, in the, say, year and a half before the ski accident? How would you describe it? Very joyful. <coughs> um, like I said, a lot of energy. He had a lot of... Uh, events that he liked to go to. He, I remember his calendar uh, when I was looking back on pictures and things. It was, we were always involved in something. He liked to volunteer a lot and... Uh, what do you mean by volunteer? What, what do you volunteer uh, for? Cystic fibrosis. I know he was a volunteer for different events and he liked to go and, and be involved, meet people, meet and greet. He, he was a good mentor. He liked to mentor a lot of uh, younger people and was very good at that and enjoyed a lot of that, a lot of contact with different people. Now you were uh, at the time living in St. George. Yes. Correct? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in, in a year, a calendar year, how many days did you spend up here with Terry versus down in St. George? Most of the calendar was at, in Salt Lake at his home. We spent a lot of time in the Salt Lake area because that's where more, all the more events More or less were. than 300 days, do you think? 25 days a month. You know, I, I per month? A, okay. a for lot, for a that lot. whole time? Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, the, 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 the describe him in terms of uh, kindness, gentleness, communicative 
that kind of thing. He was very good at communicating. He, uh, he liked to do that. That's uh, one of the things that we spent a lot of time talking and engaging in uh, a lot of fun topics that we like to explore. Terry was an explorer of all information. He liked to, when we, when we were traveling, he would always be reading up on something, always, you know, looking into things and engaging other people in gathering information. He liked to do that. But he, he was a very joyful, happy person. I, in fact, I was looking back through some of my emails, or not emails, pictures, and uh, he always had a smile on his face. He had a beautiful smile. It was, he was just a happy person. Uh, was, he, um, was he kind? Very kind. Describe that to the jury. um, How would you describe kindness? He uh, engaged with people, and I guess the way his his kindness showed through would be um, just his patience with talking with people about different aspects of their lives, and uh, he he just had a gentle nature. He, He was very easygoing that way and, and liked people, uh, my grandchildren even, the kindness that he had with uh, opportunities that he had to explore mm-hmm. and speak with them and he just had a gentle gentleness about him. Did you ever have uh, family get-togethers with his side of the family? Yes, we uh, did. Would you describe those for the jury please? Uh, <laughs> one of the first times I remember going when his granddaughter graduated and uh, with, with the whole family and his uh, first wife was there. And I remember his daughter coming to me and she said, thank you so much for putting up with uh, the family aspects of, uh, it was the first time that he had been around his uh, former wife for quite some time. And it worked out very well. It was, how, it was an, how did he treat her? Enjoyable. Oh, fine. It, it, it was actually saying we had a great big family mm-hmm. reunion, family dinner, family fun. It, it worked out very well. Now, uh, Did he ever use alcohol, please, with you? Sir. Sure. Okay. And uh, did you ever observe him to use alcohol to excess? No. Uh, there would be once or, while, once or twice that we might take a whole bottle of wine and enjoy it, but uh, okay. no, not very often. Okay. Uh, when you dated for about 18 months or close to two years, were you exclusive? Yes, as far uh, as I knew. What's that? I say as far as I knew. <laughs> All right. Well, you were up here quite a bit. Right? Yes. Yeah. Um, was, this a, was this a love relationship where you heading toward Absolutely. marriage? or How would you describe that? I, I wanted it. I wanted it long term. And I was looking forward to having a, a long term relationship with him. I adored him. I, he, he was a great guy. I was hoping that it would go long term. So, so were you in love with him? Absolutely. Was he in love with you in your opinion? I thought so, yes. Okay. Yes. And uh, so uh, at, at this point, he's about 70 or so, right? That time, yes. Uh, at the end of your relationship, uh, I'm sorry, uh, just before the accident, uh, uh, February 26th of 2016, how would you describe Terry's activity level? Just like I have, very, very busy. Where there wasn't much time that we didn't have some event that was going on. It's always always involved. I had a hard time keeping up. <laughs> okay. Uh, did you ever, during the 18 months or so that you were dating him, up here 300 days a year, okay, did you ever notice him to be clumsy or, or accident prone, anything like that? Not really, no. No, he uh, seemed to... He was helping me move an estate from my from my parents. I had lost uh, my mother okay. right before I uh, met Terry, and we did a lot of uh, juggling of my assets from her estate. And uh, he was very helpful with that. In fact, he helped to move a lot of furniture and didn't damage too much <laughs> that I remember. <laughs> he seemed to be pretty capable. Were you ever aware that he had a? Uh I think a, a problem in one of his eyes that he was yes. not seeing. Were you aware of that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Did it ever affect him in your uh, anything you saw? You know what was odd about that is I half the time didn't realize that he had a problem. I, I never knew which eye it was. I, I would have to ask. Mm-hmm. And uh, now for the most part, he, he covered it very well, I guess, if there was an extreme problem. 
I, I wasn't aware of it. He drove, in fact, thinking about that with my mom's estate, we were moving. I had a home in, in Bountiful that I sold, and we were getting rid of a lot of the furniture and items in that home and moving things down to St. George. And he, he drove the big old truck, the 26, probably 26 foot truck. I don't know that we like, rented. Like a U Haul thing? Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Down and to St. George? Down to St. George from Salt Lake. And he didn't have a bit of trouble, so I, I'm not aware. Uh, yeah, of the eye situation, like I say, he covered up very well. Uh, when you were up here, did he do the driving, or did you, or did you do the driving? Oh, he did the driving. You have no same problem with him driving? No. Any accidents? Any bumping into people in the parking lot or other cars? Nothing like that. Not while I was with him, no. Okay. Uh, <coughs> do you recall uh, how would you characterize his health during those eighteen months or so when you were? Uh, before the accident like I say the hiking the swimming the dancing uh, he had a lot of energy he, he seemed to be very healthy very healthy as far as I knew did he appear to have any chronic conditions that you were aware of not that I was aware of I say if there was anything there I was not aware of it did you ever complain of a headache problem not extreme not any more so than most of us do and might get a headache in an afternoon and need to lie down for a minute, mm -hmm. but no. How about sleep apnea? Were you aware of that? No. Okay. Uh, what about depression? Uh, did he ever complain about being depressed? Not during that time, no. What about... He didn't have time. <laughs> okay. Uh, what about complaining that he was losing energy? Did you ever hear that? Not during that time, no. Yeah, I'm talking about prior to the accident now. Right, right, right. That's <coughs> you ever uh, notice that he was forgetting things prior to the accident? No. Not, no. not yeah. that I noticed, no. By the way, have you ever testified in court before? Is this the first time? No, this is the first time. First time, okay. It's fun, isn't it? <laughs> My hands are sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, did you ever... Uh, uh, you're not a skier, correct? I used to ski. Okay. Years ago. Uh, did Terry ever talk about skiing with you prior to the accident? Oh, he would have loved to have had me ski with him, but yeah. no, I, I, I have a knee that went out on me a few years back, and I don't ski anymore. What was, what was Terry's attitude towards skiing? I'm, towards skiing? Oh, yeah. that was his livelihood in the wintertime. That was one of the reasons that the distance between St. George and Salt Lake got to be a problem, especially in the wintertime, because he did not want to leave to go to warm St. George where he could stay up here and ski. How did you find out that there was a ski accident? I was on my way back here from St. George the day that, I think I was on the road in fact when he called and said I have been in a ski accident and I'm injured and, but I'll tell you more about it when we get home. I don't think he wanted to worry me. Mm -hmm. So he said, you know, I'll talk about it later. Did he, did he ever give you the name, the person who hit him? I don't think so, not at that time, All right. no. And that was the same no. day, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so what did you do after that? I just met him at the house, uh, or well not met him there, I think I got there, I arrived there first, and then he came later in the probably early evening is when he finally got back. Describe his condition to the jury, please. <laughs> he looked like a truck had hit him when I remember him walking in. He just was very disheveled, uh, just looked bad. He didn't look like he felt very well at all, he was kind of... Wild hair, looked like he, yeah, he, he wasn't looking good. Ash and gray, his, his face, his coloring, everything. He just looked like he was injured. How about his mental status? He was, uh, didn't want to talk much at that point. That's why I was kind of trying to get information from him of what had happened, but he, um, he was cranky. He was ornery. He just was tired and wanted to go to bed. In fact, that's basically what he did. I wanted to encourage him to go to the doctor because I was quite concerned by the way. Well, especially when he said his ribs were broken. He knew his ribs were broken at that point. And then a concussion. I think they had determined the concussion there at the clinic. Slight concussion. No, maybe not. I don't know if that even happened. I just know he had really sore ribs and looked really banged up. Did he, did he talk about whether he lost consciousness or not? He did say he lost consciousness, yeah. Okay. Uh, did he tell you how he was taken off the mountain? He went into toboggan, I know that. Okay. Um, 
Was he able to move around at all uh, very well? Not when he got home. No, he, he was a very sore Jose. He, he didn't he didn't move well at all. He in fact he went to bed quite when he got home it might have been like I say early evening, six thirty, seven o'clock and, and he wasn't up for much after that. He just headed to bed. Was he pale? Very. Did he complain about weakness? Yeah, he, he He pushed me away, basically, it felt like. It was just, he was withdrawn. He didn't do a lot. He, the joy was gone from him. And of course, I kept trying to realize, you know, he, he was injured, he didn't feel good. But at the same time, he was pushing me away. And at that point, I started spending more time down in St. George. Um, and the relationship just dissolved eventually after six months. I mean, it, just, it took some time, but it didn't, uh, it didn't happen quickly, but it, just wasn't good after that. He, he had no joy left in his life. But at the same time, I would have stayed there, but he pushed me. He just didn't push me away. Did, did, did you observe why he had no joy left in his life? What was going on? You know, you I, I, that's <coughs> a good question because not knowing that, you know, what he was dealing with, I just figured it was relationship status things. I was trying to email and talk and put things back together. I haven't always been real successful in relationships, and so I blamed a lot of it on uh, that, and uh, trying to think it was my fault or that things were going wrong in the relationship. And now looking back, I, I think there was more going on than I realized. Um, Did he I didn't know. obsessed with anything that he had been obsessed with before? So his health. He he felt very conscientious about or conscious of his um, his mental status and capabilities, and it seems like he just explain that to the jury. Um, it's hard after seven years to think back on on sure. specifics. Uh, he uh, just little things that he would try and do. He felt like he was not capable of getting things done like he was used to, you know, and I know he'd spent a lot of time on his laptop and he was he was very involved with the um, fidelity and his finances and different things. He would, you know, get involved with his broker and talk about things and they would do things on the laptops and they would, um, he, I, I don't think he felt like he was where he was before the accident. He just couldn't, I know there was one time, silly little thing, but he was putting up a, um, an antenna on the window of the house. Terry was very conscious of saving a dime. He wanted to, you know, fix things and do things on his own. And so he was putting in this antenna and he got really kind of disgruntled about putting in a simple antenna on the window of his uh, living room. And things like that, yeah, he, he just, that, that's what I saw, but as far as you know, what he was feeling, um, I, I think he was real discouraged, and that's where he was putting that across too. That he just felt real discouraged with what he was trying to do. Did, did Terry seek uh, therapy? <coughs> if you know, I think he did. Yeah, um, I, I, I know that. Yes, he did. He did have. He had doctor's appointments and things that he was doing after that accident. I know he was. I think he was struggling with that and trying to figure out what was going on. And uh, 
like I say, Terry hides things really well as far as, you know, um, I think he didn't want to let on that he was struggling, but at the same time, being his partner, I think he would let on a little bit more that, you know, he was having some issues with things, but I think he kept trying to overcome as well, but was still hurting. Did you seek counseling? Uh, did I? Yes. For what I was did. happening with Terry? Uh, well, I sought counseling for myself, yes. Yeah, I, exactly. I, I, I Explain did. that. <clears throat> the relationship was falling apart, and uh, I was taking on some of that blame and, and wanting to find out why and figure out what was going on with me. And um, so I just sought counseling in St. George. I went to a counselor for a few weeks. Uh, you told me once you were heartbroken. Explain that. I thought I had met the love of my life when I met Terry. Um, we were just a cute couple. We did great together, and uh, it didn't work. He broke my heart when he started pushing me away, and it just dissolved. How long did you have a relationship? How many months after the accident? About, about six months. Six months? About okay. six months. Did his, act, did his activity level change during that time? Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, extremely, ex extremely, yes. His activity level changed, but that's not why, I don't think that's why the relationship fell apart. Uh, but just tell the jury about the change in his activity level, if you would. Oh, he, like I said, he, was, he became like an old man. He didn't want to do anything anymore. He wasn't, just felt like he wasn't capable or just didn't feel good about it. His, his joy was gone. Terry was a joyful person, and his joy was gone. He didn't feel the joy anymore. Did his personality change after the accident? Explain. Basically that, yes. He, he, um, well, he became agitated easily. Terry was not a man that I ever knew to be um, aggravated, agitated, mm -hmm. angry, and uh, he became more so in that regard afterwards. He was... Yeah, little things would get him. Like even the dog, my dog was, <laughs> she always would go sit on his chair in the living room on the back of his chair. And I remember him coming out one day and he pushed her off the chair and yelled at her and scolded her and you know said, why are you on my chair, get away. And, and little things like that that just didn't seem right, he changed. And that was a big change from the way he acted before. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, what about his emotional status? Uh, did that change? Hmm. How'd you describe it? Yeah. He. he that's hard. Um, it's kind of silly, but he seemed to cry easily. Um, like, get frustrated and tear up and 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 that was something that he didn't uh, like I say before he would I think he wanted to show he was strong and capable and and, and afterwards he showed kind of a weakness to the effects of everything that was going on for him how would you uh, summarize your relationship at about five months after the accident. How to summarize that for the jury? He was very withdrawn at that point. It, that's why I say he was pushing me away and I don't know if it maybe was he, maybe he thought that would be the better thing for me. In fact, I think he was kind of encouraging me thinking, okay, I'm just not the same person anymore. I think you need to move on with your life. Go down to St. George. Of course, long distance is hard. And I had my children there and my family, and I wanted to spend time there and uh, would encourage him to come with me. But at that point, for whatever reason, he refused to be a part of that anymore. Your Honor, can we just deal with the housekeeping matter for a minute? If, if we're trying to let the jury leave at 5, and if we're trying to get this witness done today, uh, we would like the remainder of the time. But if she's coming back tomorrow, we don't have to worry about this. Why don't we see how far we get? Mr. Sykes, please proceed. Uh, the 
Describe any cognitive changes by the end of the relationship in terms of attention, concentration, seeming smart, etc., all those things, expressing himself verbally, and change in those areas. That's where he withdrew. He really didn't engage anymore with it. Uh, even emails and things when I was gone and the exchange of um, content when we would email back and forth or even talk, it, it was, wasn't there anymore. Did, he, did it seem like he lost intelligence to you? Sure, yeah, I, I guess. He, he, wasn't, uh, he wasn't the same man, so it was hard for me to say just what specifically were you working hard to try to save that relationship? Absolutely, yes. I worked very hard. <coughs> uh, this this loss of the relationship, do you have any reason to attribute that to the ski accident? Do you know, I didn't at first, and uh, now looking back and seeing that perhaps it was a brain injury and perhaps there were other things going on, I, I would say so now, yeah. Until the day before the ski accident, was the relationship strong? Mm hmm Yeah, I, I, I think so. Yeah, we were Hold doing on one great. Second. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Egan. Ms. Davidson, Hello. pleased to meet you. My name is James you. Egan. I am counsel for the defense and I have some questions for you. Okay. Um, I'll try to be quick. We don't have a lot of time. I know, I so that. I, I apologize if they're kind of rapid fire. Okay. So you said that Mr. Sanderson hides things really well, and I'm wondering if you think that it's possible that he, he might have hid some medical conditions, not necessarily intentionally, but he, he kept them from you in the way that you described. Is that possible? Probably, yeah. So it's, is, that, is it fair to say that when it comes to depression or anxiety or un, a number of other medical conditions, it's possible that he had them and you didn't know about it. That could be. And you wouldn't dispute if there were medical records to the... Uh, oh, that, that no, I wouldn't dispute that, no. Right, okay. Um, you said, I believe, that uh, if I heard you correctly, it was your understanding that Mr. Sanderson did not know who hit him at the time that you first spoke with him about the accident. Is that correct? As I recall. And he was also uncertain about what happened. Is that right? He lost consciousness. That's all I knew was, yeah. So I, I yeah, I don't know that other than yeah, losing con consciousness and going on perhaps what someone else said. Okay. And was that someone else to your understanding, Mr. Craig Ramon? Yes. Okay. And do you know Craig Ramon? I don't. No, okay. I don't. Um, I mean, I may have met him once. I, I just don't remember. Okay. Um, was it your understanding from what you learned about the accident um, that Mr. Sanderson had been asked if he was okay by a, a Deer Valley or some other ski patrol person? And he said that he was. And, and that's, I think, after when we did start talking about the accident, he had described that, yes, someone had asked him, you know, are you okay? And my understanding was when he came to, and you know how you come to, and you're kind of like shaken, and it's like, are you okay? And yeah, yeah, I, I think I'm okay. But then, you know, five minutes, ten minutes down the road, you're like, Oh, wait a minute <laughs> my ribs hurt you know I, I'm not okay I hurt I, I, I don't feel the same I see and speaking of the ribs uh, it is it true that the ribs were his chief complaint his pain in his side when you first talked to him yes that was his main concern just because I would try and give him a hug or try and help him and it's like don't touch me 
but I, he, he didn't look good either. He, that's where I became concerned too. And I, I have a daughter that uh, has a nursing degree, and I remember calling her and saying, Kara, what do I, you know, do I need to watch for something? What do I do here? And she kind of briefed me on watching, you know, as a person that has a concussion, what to do. And so I kind of, you know, kept that in my awareness through the evening. But then I insisted that we get him to the doctor the next day. Okay, as I recall, you, you you said that you had encouraged him to go even that the, I would the like day to, before. Yes, yes, but yeah, he, he just wouldn't have anything to do with, he wanted to go to bed. He was like, no, I'm going to bed, I'm done, I don't feel good, I'm just going to bed. And he complained about his ribs, correct? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But he did he complain about any head pain? You know, he... I, I'm sure he did, yes, because that's why I called my daughter. And, you know, I mean, I knew that the he had a, um, well, whatever it was, I guess there was a suspicion of a concussion at the time. I don't know if it had actually been diagnosed at the clinic. I'm not sure of that. But I, I know that there was a suspicion of it, and, and because he wasn't feeling well and complained of just not, well, he didn't look good. And that's when I wanted to make sure he was okay. Okay, the, these might not be uh, in a terribly organized fashion, these next okay. questions, but I'm just trying to, again, sure. be mindful of time. Uh, as I understand it, immediately after the relationship that you had with Mr. Sanderson, he moved on to a new relationship. <laughs> Is that correct? I, I hate to say it, but I kind of encouraged it at one point because I think I, my jealousy was a little bit there, and, and uh, she had been... Uh, with us through different concerts and hiking and doing things and at one point I just thought you know maybe you and Robin ought to try it out because you've got a lot in common but that was my own little jealousy okay um, and you, you talked about the reasons for the ending of the relationship early on you didn't think that it was related to the accident correct I didn't know I thought it was my doing just because I don't do real well in relationships. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry to hear <laughs> sorry. you say that, but in in terms of uh, your own understanding now, you, you mentioned that you have a new understanding. But that is it fair to say that specul speculation? You don't know what his actual reasons were. You haven't talked to him about those. No. And no. just to be clear, well, do you know actually? And, and this is the sad part: is a, a few probably how many years has it been? Seven years, um, probably within the last. Four years ago, maybe during the deposition time. No, that was two years ago. At some point, he contacted me again and said he was really sorry for what had happened and that he felt badly and tried to get us back together. But I, I've been in a new relationship and quite steady and doing well with it. <laughs> so I'm good now. I see. And uh, in that conversation, did this accident come up at all? I don't remember. Okay. Sorry. Um, as I understand it, your understanding of his medical condition, his health following the accident, was primarily um, pri primarily derived from those couple weeks after the accident. Is that correct? Yes, as far as I know. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's, it, it, so like you're up close, personal. I took care of him for the first couple of weeks right after. I stayed there for about, I think, two weeks, close to two weeks. Right, and and so that up-close personal uh, um, understanding of his medical condition is is uh, limited to those weeks. Is that correct? That and then the, the few months after that that we were together, um, yeah. Correct. No, what I'm trying to get to, to... No, that's okay. What I'm trying to get to is in your deposition, um, you made a distinction about... Um, the, the understanding you had at the time and that those of those few first few weeks and that later you became uh, um, I think focused on uh, the relationship and not on his health is I think how you put it does that sound fair sustained okay I apologize I'm trying to just be quick so uh, sure let's see um, would it be fair to say that the, your understanding of his uh, health um, was limited after those few weeks because you didn't see him as, as uh, frequently. Oh, okay. Uh, 
and I could get the deposition transcript out and bring it to you and we could look at the no, actual that's all right. if you I, don't recall okay yeah I, you're just saying that, that that time that I was taking care of him that would be the limitation of my understanding what his health conditions were yeah that you had a good understanding for those few weeks but then after that you didn't have as good an understanding because you were focused on other things and he had withdrawn. Probably. That, that was accurate. Okay. That's, that's what I mean. That's fair. I, that's fair. Okay. I okay. didn't answer, sure. ask the question no, that's, very well. That's fair. I'm glad that we got to that. Sure. Thank you. Um, so you mentioned earlier, I believe, that he be, kind of became like an old man. Do you remember mm -hmm. that testimony? Yeah. No, definitely. So um, would it surprise you if he had told someone, uh, maybe a, even a doctor, a number of weeks before the accident that he'd gotten old all of a sudden oh before the accident even yeah no, I'm not aware of that okay but would that surprise you if he had said that yes okay it, it, it would I guess because uh, we as I recall we were quite active up until that time but then again I had been I had been away for a while I had been in st. George for some time I don't know there again that's why I'm, I'm trying to think it's been so long um, sure. Because I was coming back when the accident had occurred. I was just coming back. So I had been away for a couple of weeks prior to that. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, just in this same uh, vein, would it be uh, surprising to you if someone had uh, said that he would, again, before the accident, okay. routinely walk into walls? Oh, that surprises me. Or what about, uh, you mentioned the vision issue, which you did have an understanding of, correct? Absolutely. So w did you ever observe him asking someone uh, standing on the right side of his vision mm -hmm. to move so that he could see them better? Oh, no. Okay. Um, were you aware of uh, any um, medical event like a stroke like event that might have uh, impacted him and he would have had to get MRIs and that sort of thing for prior to the accident I don't remember okay that's that's okay don't remember. that's the if that's Sorry. the truth that's fine um, and I one of the reasons I ask it is that uh, I'm wondering if you know whether that sort of thing was the reason that he retired from his profession oh that surprises me, no. Well, I'm, I'm just asking if oh, that's no, your no, knowledge. No, 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 okay. not at all. And then, um, did he ever talk about uh, adjusting his skiing to one side of the slope so that he could avoid hitting people? Never. Not not in my knowledge, no. Or, or what about just being picky about the days that he skied so that he could avoid um, bad lighting? Oh. This is all new information. Never, never okay. heard of it. I'm, I'm not giving you information. I'm just asking if it would be something you would say or you would no. would have seen in, in him. Okay. No. no. Um, okay. I believe I am done, but I'm going to look at one more thing to see if I need to ask it. It may have been covered. Oh, just I wanted to be clear about this. During those weeks just after the accident. As I understand it, you were the only one with him during those weeks. Is that right? Yes. You were the one caring for him yes, and yes. communicating with him. Yes. And as you understand it, he was withdrawn from all other people during that time. As far as I know, yes. I don't know as far as conversations with his on the phone or emails or whatever, but yes, physically, I was the only one there. Okay. That's all my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. I'm sure you can answer about hearing something about okay. Do you, do you know, have you ever had a broken rib? No. Have you known people that have? Yes. They tell you it's pretty painful? Very. Yeah. So, do you think a person with four broken ribs will no. tell someone they're okay? Uh, but that's. Okay. Oh. Okay. Uh, let me ask you, uh, Sir Egan tried to uh, box you in with the, the uh, two weeks of medical care, but uh, you you were still coming up 25 days a month after the accident, weren't you? 
not as frequently not as frequently but yes I was still spending a lot of time up there of course yes I I was still trying to maintain a relationship in in the in the three months after the accident how many days do you think you spent up here or well let me there again looking back through photos that's the only thing I can go through um we I had a a we still spent a lot of time together. In fact, I even encouraged him to come down to a birthday party where my granddaughter's in uh, Cedar City. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I was, like I say, looking at photos. And uh, another one, we went to his um, his granddaughter's graduation in Washington in June of that year after the accident. But uh, so, we, yes, we spent a lot of time together still. And traveling and doing what we were trying to do but it just yeah it was necessities necessity travel not enjoyment travel in the six months after the accident do you think you had a pretty good idea of, of what kind of person you had changed into what kind of problems you was having i yes i i, I saw a big difference mr egan no questions all right you may step down thank you why don't you just have a seat and we're, I'm going to excuse the jury first. So we're going to go ahead and recess at this time and we'll reconvene tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Thank you. Oh, let me, I have to do this. I have to remind you of your obligation uh, not to, as, as, uh, as much as you might be tempted, not to do any of your own investigation, not to review anything on the Internet or anywhere else, not to uh, communicate with anyone about the case, including your fellow jurors, And remember that uh, the evidence will be coming in one piece at a time and that you need to keep an open mind until you hear all of the evidence. So thank you for your attention today. step down. Thank you. Court proceedings, spectators shall remain in the courtroom until the judge, the jury, and the parties have withdrawn and the bailiff gives permission to leave. Do you mind if we excuse our parties who have been here, our clients? Not at all. Okay, so you're free to go. Is there anything that the lawyers need to address right now? Yes, yes, briefly, Your Honor. Uh, it'd be nice to get our monitors working. Is that a possibility, or we, did we give up? Yeah, I guess that's your... Uh, that's up to you. It sounds like it's, we're giving up. Is that true? <laughs> we can try after this. Okay. And then our witness... As I, met, as I mentioned before, there is a very large monitor in the courtroom next to us, and if it's not being... I think tomorrow it'll be used by the commissioner. Uh, well, there is there is one for this room, so we have a large monitor that could be rolled in front of that screen and used, um, if you'd in like to. In addition to that screen? Yeah, there's a large television monitor with an HDMI HDMI port on it. And we put it where again? I'm sorry. Well, you can put it where that screen is, so you could roll it back and forth as necessary. I like, uh, gentlemen. Uh, well, and Kristen, sorry. Uh, where, if if they're offering a big screen, do we want it or do we don't want it? Why don't we bring it in right now and you can take a look at it? Okay, and then we we just need the. Steve, I don't. I don't think we. Uh, we're abandoning it. it. We we like that better. Thanks. Okay. Okay, and then a witness line up for tomorrow from the plaintiffs, please. Mr. Sykes. I'm sorry, Jacob. Witness witness, witness line, line up for tomorrow. <coughs> Wendell Gibby in the morning and. Um, I think it's Sam Golden. Sam Golden's in the afternoon, isn't it? We gave him this list quite some time ago. So this is the uh, list they gave me, and uh, Wendell Gibby, Sam Goldstein, both in the morning. Does that sound right? No, not in the morning. Uh, 
<coughs> give you in the morning and go on in the afternoon. Uh, we have two other before and after witnesses we hope will be here on time. And, and, and we will like fill that. in with them as we are able. Okay. So, so daughter Shay? Shay and Polly Gresham. And then how about brother of son-in-law, Mark. Are those three? Friday. Are those three planning to go tomorrow? He's coming Friday. He's coming Friday. Thank you for that. So it sounds like four witnesses tomorrow: Gibby, Goldstein, Shay, and Polly. Depends on the length of how we go. Um, uh, we hope we'll have four witnesses tomorrow. One of them's got flying in from Montana, and the other one, Washington. So, but no more than those four. Well. If we have extra time, we've told him this, and we've advised the court, we may call Gwyneth Paltrow. We don't want there to be dead time uh, in the courtroom. So that's, there's a question why I'm asking, Your Honor, because uh, well, what's the lineup? I don't want coyness. I wanted this. Hey, there's no weeks. coyness here. Okay, no. so times. I gave you this three weeks ago. You sat in my conference room. I showed you my trial plan. Gibby, Goldstein. Yeah. Shay Holly. And a and week ago, we notified you. That can I just get a yes from that? Like, those are the four ago, plans. We, noti we notified him that we could call when it's called at any time if, we, if there was dead time. So there's a chance you may call her tomorrow? Possibly. We're planning on calling her Friday. That's our plan. Okay. So. But those four, I mean, can we just get a yes? Five. Possibly Gwyneth. That's five. No. I mean, if we don't, in all fairness, in like, all fairness, Mr. Time. Owens, if if he doesn't have a witness available, then we're then he's eating up his trial time with dead time. I no, I get it. But like, when is Shay coming? When are you planning on her we're tomorrow? We're hoping to have them tomorrow morning, later or tomorrow afternoon. Now, you know, uh, till one. Shay doesn't get until one. Polly. Polly, I think is. I think it's coming in the morning, but I don't know for sure. You don't know when your witness is coming tomorrow? <coughs> I'm not certain. We're hoping no. to have them tomorrow. No. That's our plan. All right. These people are, are out of town. I yeah, the, the, messages with them. They the pre-trial the pre -trial order requires that, the, that one side disclose to the other who they're planning to call the next day. I guess it doesn't specify the order or the times. Um, just be prepared for those possible five witnesses. Right. It's just like we don't know when Paul is coming, even coming. That's, that seems odd. Well, that's, that's, what, we ha that's what we have right now. Um, and, and, and counsel, I guess what I'm asking is that as soon as you know when a witness is arriving, that you let the other side know? Absolutely. Okay. Believe me, if I had a... For, what, what did uh, Shay tell you? She said her flight doesn't get in until 1 o'clock, so she's going to try to come right up here after that and be available early-ish afternoon. I expect but you to... The first I witness we're calling the and all sorts of uh, is Goldstein in the afternoon at 1.30. That's the plan. Okay. Thank you. He only has one day. So. All right. <coughs> Any, anything else for this afternoon? No. Take care of that cough, Mr. Sykes. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I offered him a mint. We're now. I'm, I'm we're now. To cut back to a to a pack okay. today. I'll give him this in the morning. Thank you. We're now adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.